Royals just completed four days in the Motor City on a wild ride, with the last two days going right down to the wire. The Indians just completed four days in Chicago, sweeping the last place White Sox. The Royals are hanging on to their wild card hopes. The Indians are one win away from a tie for a wild card spot. Game one of three is next on Fox Sports Kansas City. Royals baseball comes to you from Coffin Stadium for the final homestand of the year. And the Royals have six straight games against teams in front of them in the wild card, beginning with the Cleveland Indians. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the ballpark. I'm Ryan Lefevre. The Royals are done with the first place Tigers, and they won the season series with Detroit. It has not gone so well against the second place Cleveland Indians. The Royals won the season series with Cleveland last year. But before that, Cleveland had won eight straight season series against the Royals. And as it stands right now, Cleveland has a 9-7 to advantage, so the Royals need to sweep the series to win the season series. Of course, they have bigger things in mind than their season series with the Indians. But that number at the bottom right hand of your picture there, 4.30, that's the highest ERA for the Royals against any team in the Central. As always, we welcome in Rex Hudler, and while the Indians – haven't seen the best of the Royals pitching all year. They did see the best of James Shields last Wednesday. Yeah, and that's what they're going to get again in this game one. You can almost guarantee that. The body of work and the way this guy's taking them out this year, he has been fantastic, especially against Cleveland in his last start. Fifth time this season he went eight innings in a game, and he was ferocious. He gave up a couple early inning runs like he typically does most of the season, but he settled down, and how about that exclamation point? A fantastic play, a highlight reel play. Hopefully his defenders will do the same thing and help him out tonight. That game began with Alex Gordon swinging at the first pitch of the game right there. A home run off of Scott Kazmir. He has a 10-game hitting streak with four home runs, seven RBIs, and 10 runs scored.
Alex Gordon had a couple. And how about Alcides Escobar with the no doubter? A big one for the Royals as they won that series at Progressive Field. Joel Goldberg back here at Kauffman Stadium. And the Indians, one more victory. And they have their first winning season since 2008. The Royals desperately need wins here and the rest of the way. And when you're talking about playoff chances, strength of schedule is so important. And the Indians really have the advantage there. As far as the Royals go, they play winning teams this week, Cleveland and Texas. Then it gets easier at Seattle and at Chicago. But the Indians, these are the last three games they play against winning teams. Then four at lowly Houston. Two more against the White Sox, who they're 15 and two against, and four to wrap it up against Minnesota. Their opponents, the rest of the way, hold a 42% winning rate on the year. Bottom line: Royals need to win or sweep this series. They had the right guy on the hill. James Shields takes the ball. Next up, Fox Sports Kansas City. is brought to you by the Missouri Lottery. Play Cadillac Riches Scratchers game and you could win a new Cadillac. By your Kansas City area Chevy dealer, the official vehicle of the Kansas City Royals. And tonight's game is brought to you in high definition by Time Warner Cable, the official TV, internet, and home phone provider of the Kansas City Royals on a very fall-like evening. Terry Francona, what a turnaround for this team. The Indians lost 94 games last year, and now he's got them right on the edge of the wild card, and the Royals are right behind them. And Tampa Bay and Texas are playing tonight, so the Indians know if they win, knowing that one of those other two teams is going to lose, they would be in a tie for a wild card spot. Yeah, you know, it's so interesting baseball is, Ryan. Everyone shows up every day to win, but it doesn't happen. So, look, when your backs are against the wall like Kansas City, you've got to find a way to get through these guys here. Now, the hottest guy in there is Nick Swisher. He's got him hitting that second spot. Nick Swisher, he's been raking at a 324 clip with five home runs in the last nine games. They've won seven of them. He'll be tough. James Shields, though, he's got to be able to do his thing like he did last time he faced him. Went eight strong innings, struck out seven, and he's been really dominant. He's got a good two-seam fastball that he'll sink down in that excellent changeup, one of the best in, there is in baseball. He's got a big overhand curve and a four-seam fastball. He'll get some strikeouts and elevate him. It's a, he, he's fun when he's on, fun to watch him pitch. 
And you know, pitching and defense have been one thing that's gone hand in hand this year for the Kansas City Royals and really is fun to watch as the starting pitching has been. Spectacular plays left and right. They've got arms as we highlight Lorenzo Kane with seven outfield assists to go along with Alex Gordon's league leading 15 outfield assists. So they're good. And on the topic of defense, Michael Bourne leads off for the Indians. He didn't do much at the plate when the Royals were in Cleveland last week, but he had a very strong defensive game, defensive series. He won two gold gloves when he played in the National League, as well as three times he led the league in stolen bases. You want to keep him off the bases as Shields just misses. One ball, one strike. No, oh, Michael Bourne. He pulled out his best defense in that series against Kansas City. Man, he caught everything and he ran a few down. Look at that hard, heavy sinker. They'd like to see Bourne next season cut down on his strikeouts. 123 coming in, it's way too many. How about making 124? Back to back. Power changeup fading away from Michael Bourne and a good start for Shields. Nasty going away from lefties. James Shields has given up only a 240 average with just seven home runs to left handed batters this year. Righties are hitting him a little bit better. 272 and 11. So here's Swisher, and HUD was talking about that he's the hot bat at the moment. He is hitting five straight, he has five home runs. And 11 RBIs in his last nine games. And so he's swinging 0 and 1. They use the term streaky to a lot of hitters. Isn't that the truth, though, in baseball? Most everybody's streaky. No one either stays hot for so long or is bad for so long or you lose your job. So I guess that's the streaky label goes to the guys that hit the extreme highs and lows. Because you're right. I mean, there's no player that isn't going to hit a spot during the season when things aren't working. Sometimes it's a series. Sometimes it's a week. Sometimes it's a month. But Swisher hitting 244 this year overall. So for the most part, it has been on the low side for him. But he's heating up at the right time. And he gets that ball under Escobar's glove. And he's on with one out. If they're playing Nick Swisher straight up, there's not even a glove anywhere near that. However, Escobar was playing on the right side of second base, the second base side of the bag, and he had to go to his backhand. Took a funny hop on him, too, so it wasn't exactly an easy play for him. But it's a good effort. He could have thrown him out had he gloved it. And so he's on with one out, and now Jason Kipnis. Probably the best all around hitter the Indians have. And if the Indians advance to the postseason, and if this run they're on this year continues next year and the year after that, more people will know about Jason Kipnis. So he can do it all. Very good defender, good range. Hustles and runs hard. Plays the game. Late swing and a fastball, and he's down 0 and 2. It's one of their star players in the future. So here are the numbers from Wednesday. Shields took the mound in the bottom of the first. He had a three nothing lead. And he gave up the two runs in the bottom of the first and then no runs no hits innings two through eight and then came out in the ninth and he is sharp in the first inning tonight that is his second strikeout second time he has gotten a hitter with a changeup two down I'll say he's sharp and Ryan I'm going to just tell you watching the pitch here his changeups tonight they're beautiful they're starting on the inside part of the plate and ending up on the outside that's how much he's taken off of that changeup. Really good depth to that changeup tonight. Just a few batters here.
And here's Carlos Santana. Now he's hit in 10 straight games. He's done well against the Royals this year, hitting over 400 with two home runs and 11 RBIs. And when he swings, he means it. Down and away, ball one. And now Shields just one out away from getting through what at times has been a troublesome first inning. Yeah, you can see, you know, he's had some interesting uh, issues in the first inning, but you can see what he does after that. And that's kind of really the lay of the land when you're a starting pitcher, whether you're a veteran or you're young. Your first inning is your feel inning. You're going to feel what you got. What kind of stuff do I have? How's the mound conditions? How's the catcher? What's the what's it all like? And then once you find yourself, typically they settle in. Up the right field line. It is a fair ball into the corner. Swisher to third. He'll be held up at the last moment. And the Royals got that ball to the plate very quickly. So Santana gets another hit. He gets a two out double, but it does not produce a run. Okay, we've seen some excellent relay throws from outfielders, and that's important when it comes to cutting runs down. You've got to be able to pick the ball up cleanly off the wall. This one here falls right on the chalk. Lucky as Santana goes, he'll take it though. Pick it up cleanly. Don't try to rush. Get it to your cutoff man. That's the formula for success to holding runners and to get them getting them out as we witness that unbelievable relay throw on Saturday afternoon or evening to get that win in Detroit, Ryan. That was pretty cool, wasn't it? It's about as an exciting as it gets to finish a ball game. Michael Brantley is a 272 hitter, but he's one of the best in the league, hitting with runners in scoring position. And we just showed you James Shields' line from Wednesday when he gave up the two runs in the first to the Indians. It was Brantley who drove in the two runs. Okay, Brantley, he's been really good with runners in scoring position, 352, but with two outs, it's even better. One and one. That's 339 with uh, runners with two outs in scoring position, but still Which overall. Is very good. He is. He, he's been solid. You know what he's doing, Ryan? Not trying too hard. He's shorting up and trying to put the ball in play. He's letting the ball come to him. To Hosmer, down to a knee, and now race to the base. And Hosmer goes sliding in for the inning final out. So it's a scoreless first inning for Shields with good defense. The Royals got the ball out of the right field corner quickly, preventing Swisher from scoring, and then Hosmer with this play to end the inning. Second place team and the first place team in the division would be 
just fine, but time is running out for the Royals, and they were hoping for a four and two and five and one trip. They did take two out of three from the Indians, and here's how Ned has them lined up against Scott Kazmir. Look, two out of three sounds good, but man, the way it's going now with these little games to play here, they can't afford a loss hardly at all, and it makes it tight. But really, if you ask Alex Gordon, like I did today, if he was tight and the rest of his bunches are, he said, no, Hud, we're enjoying this. This is the closest we've been in a long time. We're relishing the moment. Doesn't matter who, who's playing where or anything. We're all in this together. All 35 of us now that the rosters have expanded. And that's the mentality you have to have, especially to beat a guy like Casper. Now, he has been roughed up a little bit in his last few, few games that he's started. But this guy here has the ability. You see the strikeouts, low walks, a lot of strikeouts. He's got a nasty slider. That's the one he gets his right-handers to swing and miss on. He's also got a, a nice little fastball that he'll reach 95. And he's got a changeup as well. Will he serve up a fastball on this first pitch to Alex Gordon? I say yes. Challenge him again. Because that was, he might say that was lucky, but Gomes might call something different. And he went with a slider. Might have something to do with Wednesday. This was the first pitch of the game. Kazmir to Alex. And a line drive home run to right center. Boy, I'll tell you, that's a great start to a day. First pitch, one nothing. Okay, he tried second pitch. And he got one elevated. Kazmir's got a little bit of fuzz on that fastball. He can run it up there and... 95, maybe a little more, depending on the weather. Weather's nice and cool tonight. This guy's got a lot in their tank. Alex doesn't have a high batting average against the Indians this year, but four home runs, 10 RBIs, and he had two of those home runs in that series. And now Santana goes to the bag unassisted for the first out. And speaking of Carlos Santana at first base, here are the Indians defensively. And Ryan, you even got him highlighted. How about that? First play of the game gets him in our highlight box. He's there just one time. Pretty good hands over there at first base. But Swisher is the DH tonight. Or excuse me, Swisher's in there playing the outfield. So, And Jan Gomes is behind the plate because Jan Gomes has success throwing base runners out. He's a pretty good guy. Pretty good catch and throw. He's got a strong arm. And he's the reason why Santana's been playing a lot of first base rather than catching. 0-2 oh on Bonifacio. Two forty one overall, two ninety seven since joining the Royals. And his on base percentage is over three seventy since joining the Royals. And that fastball just missed inside, so. Kazmir is attacking the Royals, at least the first two hitters. It was the Royals on the attack when they faced him on Wednesday. They were swinging very early in the count. It wasn't just Alex Gordon trying to prevent falling behind and allowing Kazmir to get to that trademark slider. It's going hard. And now a changeup is fouled away, two and two. Okay, a little emergency hack. Anything close, he wants to swing. But talking about Jan Gomes and his success rate behind the plate as far as throwing runners out, it's been really good. 42% of runners he's thrown out this year. Anything over 30 is a good mark for a catcher. He's 16 for 38. And in on the hands with a fastball, still two and two. And by comparison, Carlos Santana, he's only thrown out nine of 60 for 15%. So there's the reason why Gomes is catching against the Royals that have the fastest team in the league, most stolen bases. Scott Kazmir, 29 years old. Seems like he's been around for a long time or longer than being 29 years old, but he got to the big leagues when he was 19. Three balls, two strikes. First round pick of the Mets. They thought he was too small to be a 30 start a year starter, so they traded him to Tampa Bay. The Rays said, 
Great, thank you very much. Brought him up as a 19 year old. And his best year with the Rays was 07. He had 13 wins and he led the American League in strikeouts. Past Kazmir. Kipnis has it go out of his glove and we'll see how they scored. It wouldn't have been an easy play with Bonifacio's speed. Yeah, that's got to be a knock. Regardless, it's a runner on. That's all that's all anybody cares about right now. Good top spin lob there. You, there's no guarantee that a guy can make a backhand play like that on a slow runner, let alone a fast runner. So it is rule to hit. But this is a tremendous at bat for Bonifacio in his first time up tonight. Milked a lot of pitches, was down 0 and 2, fouled off a few, helping get on base and starting to rally with one. So Hosmer with one on, one out. Hit 333 on the trip. So that has him at 303 overall. All of a sudden, he is eighth in the league in hitting. And he's been even better against left hand pitching. You know, we're we talked a lot this year, Ryan, about how these young players are growing up right in front of the fans' eyes. And they're watching them every day. Hosmer, that's another number that's really impressive, his average against lefties. That he's figuring out what they're trying to do to him. And he's been able to spit on that breaking ball that they try to get him to swing away on. It's interesting, the Royals have two of the best in the league against left-hand pitching. And there you go. Hosmer, before this year, hit about 230 against lefties. So he's improved by almost 100 points. But those two guys are both left-hand hitters, Eric Hosmer and Alex Gordon. And both did very little against left-hand pitching before this year. And in asking them about their approach against lefties this year compared to last year, they had the same answer. Last year, there was no approach. And this year, trying to use more of the middle of the field, using the opposite field against lefties, and it's paid off and then some. 3-0. and yeah, you know, and earlier in the season, Eric was wanting to get off to such a good start that he was swinging at everything. Now, late in the season, you can't even compare the two between early in the season at bats and now and Eric Hosmer. Now, certainly 3-0, and you got to green light him if he gets one down the middle. But if not, spit on, take the walk, and let Billy come up. Wasn't a great pitch. More of a pitcher's pitch, 3-1. and one. And had Hosmer bending backward, thinking it was a little up and in. Brian Onora is the home plate umpire. And then a slider, and Bonifacio does it again. A delayed steal. So he has taken a baseball play. And he has wiped the dust off of it and brought it back to the Royals. Yeah, that's a beautiful play. No one's expecting it. Look at Jan Gomes. The fact that he was surprised, he dropped the ball. Surprised him. That's how, that's how you're successful there. Beautiful. Delayed stolen base. Fourth of the year for the Royals as far as the delay goes. Fouls a fastball away. Still 3-2 and two on Hosmer. Royals were running wild against the Indians when they were in Cleveland and they took two out of three. Royals stole six bases in that series. And now they've got one in the first inning of game one. And now Cabrera makes a move for second base. No throw. Well, that last series in Detroit. You know, they made some adjustments against the Royals running game and it was successful. Yeah, like put a beach worth of sand around first base. Yeah, besides way to do it besides that. But they held it. They gave him different looks and they did a pretty good job. Cleveland's going to have to do the same thing. Drilled deep center field back goes Bourne and he's got it in front of the track. Bonifacio heads up and he tags up. So. If you didn't check the temperature and you didn't notice what some of the fans are wearing here tonight, 
that right there shows you the change in weather. The wind is blowing in. It is cool. The air is very damp. And that ball just did not carry like it would have last home stand. No, but the sound brought me out of my seat because I thought he got it. Because so the sound is different. But since you talked about the conditions, Ryan, and you're right on. The, the, the wind is blowing in tonight from right and right center. So that held that ball. But he that ball was well struck. Fans were not wearing those hats last homestand. <laughs> Philly jumps back and takes ball one. All right, let's hear the sound. And you could almost see the look of surprise on his face. And that misses, and now 2 and 0 on Billy. Billy's 6 for 23 off Gasmere, so he's got a few hits off him. Lousy single make that guy happy Billy although he'd really like for you to hit a homer. How about a base hit into center field. So we'll still wait on the home run for that little guy. <laughs> but for now the Royals will take a one nothing lead. All right he's happy. Yeah, they're smiling. Good stroke. Short to the ball, inside out. Billy using the whole part of the field. Didn't want to roll his hands over. That ball was over second base before Kazmir even reacted. 77 RBIs for Billy, so second to Alex Gordon. And that gets us to Salvador Perez. And a high change up for ball one. Now both of those last two balls that were hit. Sounded good. He did not swing. Two balls no strikes. This is Kazmir's. Fifth start this year against the Royals, so they've seen a lot of him. The first time they faced him back in April, Salvador Perez hit a near impossible home run off of him. Remember? Into the right field corner. And now he's ahead in the count. Is that three the one and this far up and away? It's our ATT U verse rewind. Oh, yeah. I mean, that looks like a guy trying to foul a tough pitch away. Yeah, you see the catcher Santana. He almost leaped to catch it from going to the backstop. Good memory. Four pitch walk and a 25 pitch inning for Kazmir. Hey, let's see that home run again, Ryan. Watch where the pitch was, but watch the catcher. Watch Santana. He's going to try to catch this ball. <laughs> Look at that. I mean, you don't see home runs hit on balls with the catcher's. Coming way up out of the strike zone like that. But that'll tell you how spread out he was and how long his arms are. He could reach that. And it's easy to think that in trying to hit a home run that you lift the ball, right? You get underneath it. And we will say at times on a pitch that's up that he really got on top of the pitch and creating that backspin that you talk about. And that was a good example right there. A tough pitch, but he got on top of it. He was able to keep it straight, and that's why it carried so well into the corner. So two on two out a run in and Lorenzo Kane with Butler at second and Perez at first. Got the inside corner strike one. Lorenzo's two for eight in his career off casimir has got a couple singles. He went and it's 0 and 2. 
Kazmir back in the strike zone after a visit from pitching coach Mickey Calloway. Tied him up. It's tough pitch to beat around, make some contact on there. That's a cutter. He's, he cuts that fastball. A little late movement into a righty. Left that out over the plate. And Cabrera will play it to second base for the force on Perez. Billy Butler comes through at two outs. Bonifacio gets on. Steal second base. Billy Butler gets him home. one nothing KC. at 7:10, and the first 10,000 fans receive this green KC Shamrock t-shirt courtesy of the Kansas City Irish Fest. Gates open at 5:30, so get here early. You can get your tickets at 1-800-6-ROYALS or go to royals.com slash t-shirt Tuesday. Now James Shields with a one nothing lead. Worked around a single and a double in the top of the first. And now pitches to as Drupal Cabrera. Slider is inside ball one. Cabrera has had a down year against the league, but against the Royals, he's hitting over 100 points better than his overall average. He's hitting 340 against KC. And he is one of the best all time. Hitting at Kauffman Stadium. It's 359 at this ballpark. Two things I've noticed in between these pitches now where James Shields just started this in and Ryan. He looked over at the Bonifacio at second base and he said. Hey can you move over towards the hole a little bit. See him he says right there stop and he stopped. And then Bonifacio went over to Hosmer and said Haas. Anything soft over here, I got it. I'm playing to pull. Perfect positioning for a pop up. See, he knew. Okay, that's the things right there that you must do as an infielder to be successful. Now, watch this. Bonifacio says, okay, look, anything soft hit right here, I got it. You can go to the base. Just listen for me. That's what you tell Hosmer so he knows. He doesn't have to go off the base and field it and throw it wildly to James Shields over there covering. Not necessarily wildly, but it's a tough play for the pitcher to catch and touch the base. Communication, very important. And those two are still getting to know one another. Bonifacio and Hosmer. That's right. Jason Giambi. 
437 career home runs over 1400 RBIs. Jamie Carroll all by himself on the left side so he wouldn't have been able to make the play anyway but that was a long way to just get to it and it's 0 and 2 on Giambi. Leadership and can still do it at the at the dish. But he's a leader and that's what they wanted for. A little surprised to see him in the lineup tonight to tell you the truth. There you go the career numbers 19th season in the big leagues. He's been an MVP he's been a comeback player of the year. And he has been to the postseason eight different years. Got him looking at a slider. He's had a bad time with James Shields. That makes Giambi one for 16 against Shields. And that's the reason I was surprised he was in there tonight. Not that, that, that he, he should, he's, you know, he's too old for this type of game. No, no, no. It's the numbers. And lots of managers, they'll go on numbers, what the, what the certain hitter has against the pitcher. And then they'll say, well, I'm going to put him in there because he's got good numbers against this guy. But make James Shields. Said you got to go. Good hard sinker. So two down to Jan Gomes. And strike one. Talking about Gomes and what he does behind the plate. Well, he's done pretty well at the plate. The Royals have pitched him well, but hitting just under 300 with 10 home runs. He hit one of those. Home runs against the Royals last week. Breaking ball stays inside one and one to the opposite field. It was a beautiful swing. Great balance. Waited till the ball traveled deep. Nice and easy swing. I'll be surprised if this guy's not their prominent catcher next year. Change up and he pulls it into the corner and thankfully he pulls it foul. That's when your top hand dominates your swing. Usually that is on an off speed pitch. Some guys later in their career they develop the ability to keep that bottom hand in there and they can keep that ball fair. But it takes time. There's a souvenir for a youngster. And another off speed pulled on the ground to Carroll the former Cleveland Indian throws him out. This time Shields gets the Indians one two three. The Royals have a one nothing lead.
which team can help the Royals most down the stretch? Only two weeks to go. Boston plays six with Baltimore. The Blue Jays and the Astros each play three teams ahead of the Royals in the wild card. And the Red Sox, they're a dominant team right now. I, don't know, I think they're going to be able to handle Baltimore. I'm thinking that any team that plays the Rays, I'm going to go with B just for the heck of it. Because I like the fact that they've got three with Tampa Bay left. And they can really throw a spoil in there for, for the Royals. Oh, and two on Maxwell. It's a chance that the Blue Jays could have their fangs out saying, you know what? Yeah, people thought we were going to be at the top, but we're not. But still, we have a chance to, de to decide who's going to be at the top. We got a little extra incentive. If there was a, a D to that question, a fourth category, it would be the Royals. Right now, the Royals are in the best position to help the Royals down the stretch. I agree. There really isn't a whole lot of room to lose and hope that somebody else can pick you up. There yeah. has to be a whole lot more winning than losing over the past 13 games yeah. or the final 13 games. Two and two on Maxwell getting the start against Kazmir. Two out of five in the past against 29 year old lefty. And takes a count from 0 and 2 to 3 and 2. It's the second batter in the Royals lineup, first time through here, that we've seen do that. Bonifacio did, won it with a single. So look, even if you make it out, you're expending pitches. Fastball away, and Kazmir strikes out his first. Now we told you about Kazmir getting to the big leagues at a young age. He was 19, nine years ago. But we didn't tell you that after that great year in 07, he began a very slow fade, which resulted in two years ago, the Angels released him, even though they owed him $15 million. So he humbled himself last year and went to the independent leagues. As Cabrera goes out into shallow left center field and takes care of Jamie Carroll. So he had made his money but felt like there was some unfinished business. So went to unaffiliated minor league baseball got himself back on the radar and he's had a nice year in his comeback. He'd be a candidate for American League comeback player of the year. No question Ryan. He's you know you got to admire that he knew he had the ability he knew that he was still young enough to participate in the majors and he said look I'm going to go work on it. it's going to come back. It's a lot of hard work. So you check out what he's done in 140 innings you know 145 hits that's not too shabby. But 135 strikeouts. That's power. It's found away by Escobar. He's getting by with it. Not very big. He has a big arm, but he's listed at six foot, and he might be six foot. He might not be six foot. <laughs> he reminds me of Ron Guidry. Not the same athlete, I don't think. Gator, I think, won six or seven gold gloves. But very similar. Had a nasty slider. Struck out a lot of guys with that back leg slider. And another good plate appearance for a Royal after falling behind 0 and 2. 2 and 2 on Escobar, who has a nine game hitting streak. And he was productive during the trip. Hit 364, and he homered in Cleveland. He had gone 467 at bats without a home run. And lays off a very close pitch. So another Royal tonight taking the count from 0 and 2 to 3 and 2. Brian O'Nora has got a really tight zone. Tonight. Still three and two.
Escobar hit three home runs in April. He had never hit three home runs in a month. He only hit five all last year, so it looked like he was on his way to a big power season, but then the long drought. And Kazmir, that was a mistake pitch. A changeup at the eyes, but he got Escobar to go for it. And Kazmir strikes out two in the second inning. We're watching this and we're doing what while well, the Royals players are doing too. at least some of them scoreboard watching and so Rangers and Rays and the Rangers struggling mightily. They come here later in the week two to two right now in that one the first of four games between them and if you're trying to figure out who to root for no idea. How about a split guys. Well we were talking about that over dinner as Chisholm Hall lifts it to center field. And Lorenzo Cain will make the play. One pitch, one out for Shields. You want one team to just be completely buried and out of the race, or do you want them to split? I don't know. It's a good question. I mean, look, all the Royals need to do is worry about them and win. They've got to just hold on to their lead right here. James Shields, I would imagine that if you said that's, that's all you're getting tonight, he'd say, okay, count me in. We're going to win. And now we can update that score. Tampa Bay now leads 3-2 in the bottom of the fifth. Yeah, it was a James Loney single to knock in David DeJesus, and so 3-2. to two. And, yeah, I mean, HUD's right. You just have to worry about yourself. But, you know, the interesting thing on this one is that Texas has really brought an extra wild card spot back into play with their recent slide. I think everyone just assumed they would get in along with Oakland. One would win the division. One would go to the wild card. But Texas has lost six in a row. They are struggling. They've got to be pressing right now, and I'm sure that it's on their mind what happened last year when they ended up getting edged out at the end of the season. One and two on Michael Bourne. It can really be hectic. It can be uh, stressful um, on guys' minds, especially coming to the clubhouse and spending all day in the clubhouse. Another close pitch that goes the hitter's way, and it's been both ways for home plate umpire Brian Onora. Yeah, if you're going to be tight for one side, be tight to the other. That's a beautiful pitch there. Look at the movement on that changeup. That had Bourne giving ground, and it did more than catch the inside edge. That caught the fat part of the plate. Well, his last time up, he swung at one of those, and he said, you know what? I'm not even swinging this time. I'm just going to make him throw a strike. Because the last time he swung and missed it might have been off the plate a little bit away. But still great location. Four strikeouts in two and two thirds innings. And now Shields. Checks the defense before pitching to Nick Swisher. 
And the Royals really play him to pull as a left hand batter. And they've got three infielders on the right side of second base. And Swisher singled right over second base back in the first. Boy, Shields really has his A changeup working tonight, doesn't he? Sure does. But there's a man there that likes to compete. And he kind of smiling, walking out, saying, All right, got your A game going. Let me see what I can do here now. He's, that's what these guys have. They have that competitive sickness that goes deep, the highest level. I'm going to beat you. Competitive sickness. Never heard it put that way before. It is. It runs deep, Ryan. It's, it, it's, you know, some people have it in, in their business, too, because they understand competing. And, and it's not an easy job out there trying to compete for money. And basically, that's what they're doing at this level. But it's, it's on. I'm going to beat you, especially in front of all these people. It's the show, TV. Everything's being watched. Bragging rights are on the line for a lot of them. Put the paychecks away now. This is uh, this is all for keeps and wins. Although some will tell you it's a salary drive in September. Change up again and it missed outside. And now an Indians hitter goes from 0 and 2 to 3 and 2. Well, Salvador Perez, he he likes it. That's right where he's sitting up. Shields first walk and Swisher is on again. Okay, yeah, Brian. Some umpires hunt strikes to call, and some hunt balls. So two down, Swisher at first, and now Kipnis. Who struck out swinging at a change first time up. And he fouls the first pitch away. Only five more home games left. Come on out, support the Royals, pack the ballpark as they face two teams in front of them in the wild card. And to celebrate the season, you can now get a lower level field plaza seat for $15 to any of the remaining games of this series. That's a discount of over 50%. It's fantastic folks take advantage of that last week here. These guys really love your passion. We know it's here. Take advantage and come on out and root these guys on here one more week. At home. Really staying with the change up against Kipnis. One ball two strikes. 17 home runs, 78 driven in. He has 33 doubles. Kipnis last year was one of three hitters in the entire game with at least 10 home runs, at least 70 RBIs, at least 80 runs scored. And at least 30 driven in. The other two were Mike Trout and Ryan Braun. And Kipnis has a very good chance of repeating those numbers again this year. Got the call this time. So Shields has struck him out twice. And James Shields, big game, James, pitching a big game with three scoreless innings so far and five strikeouts. Got to go.
his family are lifelong Kansas Cityans. Sent out by Redbridge Baptist Church 10 years ago, he and his wife Jennifer began the Haiti Home of Hope Orphanage. And through the orphanage, Bill and his wife have provided food, medicine, clothing, and shelter for hundreds, hundreds of orphans. Sitting in the Buck O'Neill Legacy seat at tonight's game. Oh, way to take care of the kids, Bill. Nice job, buddy. Enjoying a 1-0 Royals lead. Top of the order against Scott Kazmier in the third. Kazmier got Alex on a ground ball to first to begin the bottom of the first inning. Fastball misses away. I told you he reminded me of Ron Guidry by, by the way he stands there. Look at him. Guidry should stand the same way before he delivered the ball. Two and zero. Oh. Take a look at tonight's Toyota League leaders. Alex Gordon, one of just three players in the American League with 20 or more home runs, 80 or more RBIs, 10 or more stolen bases. He is right at all three of those marks. So looking at his year, his batting average is down. His doubles are down. The home runs are right there. He's got a chance to set a new career high for RBIs. And then look at the company he is among. Two and two. You work hard like Gordon does all the time. You're totally focused on baseball when, you, when it comes into season. You're going to start seeing some results that you've never seen before because he's working his way through some of those growing pains early, and now he's confident, but he, he experienced failure and a huge dose of it. I, mean, I don't think you can be a star until you've had a little failure in your life. Still two and two. Well, he believes that he can be one of the best. He's been a great run producer as a leadoff man. He has scored 86 runs, which is in the top 10 in the league. And he's also driven in quite a few runs. He has 80 RBIs altogether. But 62 of those have been in games where he has led off. And Matt Carpenter of the Cardinals is the only leadoff hitter in the game who has more RBIs batting leadoff, and he only has one more than Alex. And Alex is going to reach after striking out. Okay, didn't want to do it, but that slider, it's late breaking, and it's really hard to lay off of, but Gordon... His eyes lit up when he saw that ball in the back of the screen. He said, I'm on. Strikeout wild pitch. Bonifacio had a great at bat in the first inning. He was down 0 2. A couple of defensive swings. To foul pitches away, then he reached with an infield single and turned in another delayed stolen base. And then Billy Butler with two outs got him home with a single. Okay, I noticed the pitch was crossing the plate that Chisholm Hall, the third baseman, he was breaking to the shortstop side, to the hole over there. He was coming over here because I think they, they've seen how Bonifacio tries to slug butt, he tries to push it by guys. See, Chisholm Hall's doing it again. Look where Chisholm Hall is. He's all the way over there where the pitcher is. So he's coming. He's breaking in hard. Second baseman's coming to first. They know that he has bunting ability. They're trying to defend him.
One and two. Royals are getting a long look at him at second base. When he first arrived, that's when Mike Moustakis' calf was bugging him on his left leg, so he played some third base for the Royals. The Royals have also used him in the outfield. He played quite a bit of center field for the Marlins before being traded to Toronto. But now, the past few weeks, he's been the Royals' regular second baseman. Jammed him and he pulls it foul. Still one and two. So I think the question for him during the offseason is Is Bonifacio still a utility type guy? A guy that can bounce around to different positions? Or will the Royals find a position for him and have him really work on that? Yeah. They'll have to figure out a few other things in the offseason. That's what they do. But right now, it's obvious they found their second baseman for the rest of this season. Catalyst type player brings energy. Hustles and plays hard. Switch hitter. Plays good defense. Casimir strikes him out with a slider. So two strikeouts in the inning. Gordon's at first because of a wild pitch. And four strikeouts in the game for Casimir. And now Eric Hosmer and his drive to center field in the first inning showed us the effects of the change in weather. It was the right pitch, it was the right swing, it was the right trajectory, it was the right sound. But the ball was caught in front of the warning track by center fielder Michael Bourne. Low for ball one. His front foot has really been a key for him in the second half. And when George Brett got here, he they didn't really didn't work a whole lot in mechanics. They talked more about the mental side, but he's worked really well with this foot right here. Okay, that holds him back. That keeps all of his weight back. For all hitters, but you got to control it. If you lift it too high, or if you push it too far forward, your weight's going to be off balance. Same way as a pitcher. Pitcher's got to be able to be on balance too to execute his pitches. And it seems like they tried to minimize the movement with that leg kick by widening out his stance. Remember, the season began, he was very much upright. Feet were close together, and as a result, he had a much longer stride. I like that little that little bend he's got in his leg, his back leg there. Crack bat, and he gets a base hit to center field, and Alex is going to go first to third. So he read it right away, and he takes two bases on a single by Hosmer. It's another royal trait that the opponents know that they do, and some young players. Will fall into that trap and they'll try to throw the runner out at third, but not swish. Okay, it's a doinker. Gordon, he read that doinker. He could hear the break of the bat and he knows, so he says, I'm going to third on that. Like I said, some young guys say, Oh, I'm going to throw him out. But not swish. He said, Nah, you know what? Let's keep the double play in order here. Let's not get carried away. So Billy with a chance of driving another run. The Indians are hoping for a double play. Billy drove in Bonifacio back in the first and takes strike one. Okay, and that's exactly what Casimir is hoping Billy does. By throwing him inside pitches, he's hoping Billy can roll over his hands and hit a little ground ball. But Billy's last swing on the same inside pitch, he stayed inside the ball and shot it up the middle of rocket. That's his approach. That's what he wants to do here. Stay out of the double play. That pitch stayed up. Billy would love to have that one back. 0 oh and 2. Got to get that sacrifice fly if you can. 0 oh and 2, you know, you got to be a lot more defensive because you can't get thrown out. But you're right, Ryan. That was right down the middle. Just look to get that sack fly. Or anything that you can get Gordon home on.
That's just the way baseball is, isn't it? Eric Hosmer hits one right on the nose. That would have been out of here on a warmer night, and it's an out, and then he cracks his bat and ends up with a single. One yeah. ball, two strikes. It'll drive you crazy if you let it. Osmer working on another multi hit game. He leads the league with 56. Right now, his job is to try and score. One ball, two strikes. And he got Billy to chase down and in the dirt. So Casimir has three strikeouts in the inning. And you say, well, how is that possible if he's still standing out there? But the first strikeout, the same pitch was a wild pitch, allowing Alex to reach. And the result was no outs. Pitchers that have a good slider down low in the dirt, catchers can't hit and they swing and miss on, or pitchers that have a split finger, anything that finishes guys off that bounces, or guys that can get four strikeouts in an inning. Base hit right center field. Salvador Perez, who's been so big for the Royals this year with runners in scoring position, he comes through again, and the Royals lead 2 0. Oh, that's a thing of beauty right there. Nice inside out swing. We're talking about it. Don't want to roll over on something that's coming down and in. And Salvador Perez just steps up and says, you know what? I see a big hole over there. I think I'm going to pull the ball. I'm going to shorten up my swing and just stick it and give Shields one more run to work with. Boy, that was nice. And another chance for Lorenzo Kane. He batted with two on, two out in the first inning and grounded out. And now two on, two out in the third. Grounded into a 6 4 force out to end the first inning. So the strikeout and the wild pitch is huge. If Gomes handles that ball, the inning is over. One and one. Casimir lasted just four innings when he faced the Royals on Wednesday. The Royals, behind the pitching of James Shields, won that game 6 2. The Royals picked up nine hits against him in four innings. Ground ball to Cabrera. Same result. 6-4 four, force out to end the third. Strikeout and a wild pitch lead to the Royals' second run. They lead 2-0.
Brett Sweet with a couple of Royals Hall of Famers and the alumni having their monthly meeting today. Big John Mayberry and Dennis Leonard. This is a pretty good combination here for us. And I know that, the, well, first off, this is the president now, so he's a big deal, right? Do I try to educate? Talk to him like you used to talk to him. He's, he's a big man now. All right, let's talk Royals. And I know you guys watch all the time. Big John, what do you think about this group? They had a good year, you know, and I'm out here now with all of the diehard fans and uh, still pulling for the Royals. They still got a chance to uh, get into the playoffs. And uh, it was a joy watching those guys grow and mature and uh, play well. Leo, you were telling me just a few minutes ago that that the process of getting there and, and learning how to win, that it's something that you guys went through back in the 70s. Uh, how similar is this? Well, not being on the field with these guys, I, I can kind of, I know how they feel. I mean, when you think back in 76, we kind of backed into the playoffs a little bit, but we were fighting it out all the time, and Oakland was our nemesis at that time. And we finally got in there, and all of a sudden there was a whole different feeling that, hey, we can win. And just like I see with this team now when they're down two or three runs, they don't panic, they don't fold the tent. I mean, you know, and everybody says it when you listen to TV, they, they keep coming at you, they never give up. And, you know, that's the way we were. And it, it's fun to see a little excitement here in September in Kansas City. Well, Leo didn't see that because you were looking over at me. But as a pitcher, I'm sure you never really get too upset when a guy hits the ball off of his foot like that. But, John, I'm, I'm sure that that you grimaced when you saw that. We're looking at better video, by the way. We're looking at some of, I think, your home run power. Well, I had some power, but, you know, uh, this is a ballpark that's not known for guys hitting a lot of home runs, and I think the hitters with the Royals are doing what they're supposed to do, hitting the balls in the gaps and driving in runs. Seems like everybody's got about 75, 80 RBI, so it's a team effort, and uh, they play good as a team. Now we're looking at some Dennis Leonard video, and I'm, I'm told that it's, it's you striking out Mike Schmidt, so that's that would be, I guess, 1980 as far as that goes but what do you think and I think I talked to you about this earlier in the year when you see a guy like James Shields I know no one's gonna ever have the season of complete games that you did he's probably the closest to it but what do you like most when you watch James Shields well basically I love his changeup uh, I, he never gives in to a hitter you know he battles them all the time and to be a good pitcher you got to do that I mean just because it's so-and-so uh, like me facing Reggie Jackson Hey, that's just another hitter up there. Obviously, they're a little tougher to get out, but that's when you got to bear down a little bit more. And, you know, it's unfortunate he didn't get a little bit more run support earlier in the year because his record is really not indicative of the way he's pitched this whole year. And not only that, I thought he, I think, not being in the clubhouse, I don't know, but just looking from an outsider looking in right now, he's brought that type of tenacity, I think, to the whole starting staff and the relievers. You could see it, and, and being in there a little bit, but obviously not as a player, uh, we see it every single day. How about for you, John? I mean, when, when you guys were getting good, and uh, who were those presences in the clubhouse that really, you know, galvanized and rallied the team? Well, I think of guys like Amos Otis and uh, Cookie Rojas was uh, was big in the clubhouse, talking about winning, and uh, of course Hal McRae was a great player, and of course George Brett. Uh, you know, everybody kind of led by by what they did as a performance. And if you played well, you know you're a little bit more vocal. So we had a lot of guys playing well. Hey, we saw your your fellow alum, Royals Hall of Famer and Big League Hall of Famer George Brett as a coach for a little while this year. What, well, now we see you guys at spring training for a nice, you know, casual week or so of instruction. But he was out here. What did you think? Well, I think, you know, George was the type of guy, to me, it seemed like he gave the Kansas City Royals some identity back. You know, we had some guys who were supposed to be good at the time, and they wasn't playing well. But he gave him some confidence, and he told him, hey, are you a Kansas City Royal? This is what we're supposed to do. Nobody's trying to do everything by themselves. Does the team ever just do what you do? And they bought into the idea, relaxed, and went out and started playing well. Well, it, it's such a, a big deal. And, and you, Leo, you guys get a chance to, to work with these young players before they get to the big leagues, and, and you get to speak to them and be around them in spring training. And I want to know, you know, tomorrow we'll see the major league debut of your Donald Ventura filling in for Danny Duffy. And, you know, he's one of their top prospects. What do you remember about the first time you came up, and how nerve-wracking was it? Oh, definitely it was nerve-wracking. Uh, when I got called up at the end of 74, right out of the get-go, I was in a bullpen. And I'll never forget my first appearance on the mound. I came in relief, and we were playing the Baltimore Orioles. And lo and behold, they had a man on first and second, and Frank Robinson was up. And there's a guy that I watched when I was growing up, not in, not in New York, but, you know, on TV and whatnot. And I'm going, holy mackerel. And I kind of froze a little bit, and he's the first guy I pitched to, and I think the first guy I hit in the big leagues. 
But, you know, I, I think, I don't know who was up next, but I think they hit into a ground ball double play, so I got, luckily I escaped that inning. And then my chance to pitch it soon came after that to start, and I can't say I got off to a blistering start. I was 0-4 that September. But it's not always in the success that gives you confidence. I knew I pitched a lot of innings, you know, through the last two years. And when I won 0-4, a lot of those games I came out with runners on base, so my ERA was way up there. But it gave me confidence. I said, I can get these guys out. And once you convince yourself, you can get people out. It's not going to happen all the time, but it'll help you in the long run. You hit Frank Robinson. Yeah, I didn't do it intentionally, believe me. I, sure you didn't. It's like I just shut my eyes and I threw it. I go, this is my first big league pitch, and I let it go. I said, I got to be throwing 100 mile an hour. Obviously, my mechanic too spectacular then. <laughs> So you faced the Hall of Famer. How, how about for you, Big John, either the, the first pitcher you faced or the first homer? I know you, you, know, you, you players years later, you never forget those moments, right? No, you never forget them. You know, I can remember my first home runs early in my career was off Gaylord Perry. I hit my first home run in the National League. I hit my first home run in the American League off Gaylord Perry. We still talk about it today, but I didn't get nothing too much in between, you know. But uh, it, was a, it was a great plan in my era. You know, we had great players, great pitchers, Jim Palmer, Catfish Hunter, the Vita Blues, and Tom Seavers. I mean, it was a lot of Hall of Famers seemed like pitched in the 70s, and I'm sure it's going to be some Hall of Famers in the future, but baseball to me was, was real kind of a little tougher than it is now. Uh, before we let you, you go, and so we've learned that, that Leo is now President Leo. <laughs> yeah. Right? That, that you have a new nickname. Yeah, D. Wade. <laughs> no, no, no. So the basketball game's in full effect. Yeah, full effect. So I'll be playing tomorrow. We got a bunch of old guys. We run up and down the court. So every week I'm somebody else. Next week I might be mellow. Then I might turn in the shack. I might turn to Barkley. But one thing about I never turn into a white guy. I'm always, <laughs> I'm always a brother player. <laughs> So you're not going to be Kevin McHale? No, I'm not going to be Kevin McHale. We got a Kevin McHale at the gym. <laughs> Throws his elbows like you? That's right. He's 6'11", like, like Kevin, too. But, you know, he's 65 years old. He's kind of slow. So, hey, we have a lot of fun and uh, try to stay in shape, stick around a while. Why do I ever ask you to come on? I can't imagine why. I mean, you know, you're just no fun whatsoever. You're so quiet, big job, D-Wade. <laughs> That's right. What a D-Wade tomorrow. Man. Next week, you might call me Kobe. <laughs> <laughs> Next week you might be Kobe. And what, before we let you go, then uh, what did your son tell Jeff Montgomery and I, John Mayberry Jr., when we were in Philadelphia at the beginning of the year? Uh, you, uh, hopefully you were watching the interview. What did he say about your basketball game? He said we got the slowest game in the history of basketball. <laughs> I say this is the this is the Negro League of basketball. <laughs> And with that said, oh, they almost got him, James Shields. Leo, you can't, well, I'll steal a line from Ryan Lefevre now, and Ryan knows exactly what's coming. You can't be fun at the old ballpark, especially with Big John. Oh, definitely. And by the way, Big John might have another nickname at Fantasy Camp. Which is? The Judge. Really? Yeah, John Warden's not going to be there, so I'm trying to talk Big John, because as everybody knows that's listening, you just laugh when Big John talks, and you've been down there when Warden was there. So I'm trying to recruit John to be the judge at Fantasy Camp. Let's make that happen. He's the president. Well, I know, but, you know, I know, I understand that, but, you know, judges are on the take. So I told, so I told him, so you dropped some more money down, and I might, you know, might be your judge. Gee, I, I can't believe this. This is coming from the guy that asked how much money I had in my wallet before he came on with me. <laughs> well, you know, that's John. He got all the money that he has in his one his left pocket. Right. You know, I keep my life savings in my pocket, so, you know, I might shake you down anytime. <laughs> Fantasy Camp, this, folks, is what you will get if you come to Fantasy Camp. Add in Willie Wilson, add in George Brett, add in all the rest of the alumni because it is a great group of people with their president, Dennis Leonard. Hey, guys, thanks for the visit and the stories. It's always fun, and we'll see if these guys can, can keep pushing here these final two weeks. Hey, you only got a couple of week, weeks to go, so give it all you got. You never know what can happen. Dennis Leonard, thank you. Big John, nice. as always. D. Wade. Pardon me. I'm sorry. D. Wade. <laughs> I got you. Hey, if we're in the playoffs, we'll get you somebody else, right? That's right. Kobe. Kobe. There you go. Ryan, I know none of this surprises you. Oh, man. That was fun just sitting back and listening to those guys. And I'm glad that Joel eventually got around to fantasy camp. I don't know. In all the years we have 
promoted fantasy camp up here in the booth, and we've had several former players come through and talk about fantasy camp. That right there might have been the best advertising of fantasy camp we've ever done. To be imagine several days in Arizona being right in the middle of those two guys and others. That's that's what it's all about. Oh man. Oh, that was wonderful. I've had the pleasure of being on caravan with both of those guys several times, and I tell you, it is just a. A thrill every time. Your face hurts from laughing and smiling. <laughs> nice try. Shields, he's doing all he can to try to get a pickoff over there of Michael Brantley. He's really showing some quick feet, and he's got a nice move, and he puts that ball right on the target. However, it got up underneath Brantley's right tricep area. You think that sweet tonight with the Royals alumni? Think they're having some fun? Oh, that's a great place to be. <laughs> Fantasy camp sold out too. I think they are do have a waiting list though. You can get on there. But you want to never laugh harder, and I tell you, uh. you, you may never be sore after playing, but still, you'll laugh your soreness right out of your body because they'll work you the whole time. Yeah, you go there to play baseball, but in the end, that's just part of the experience. Fouled back to our left. Giambi struck out, struck out looking in the second inning against Shields, and Shields already has six. He started this inning with a strikeout of Santana. And of his six strikeouts, four, and the last four have been looking. So he's had the Indians mixed up. Looking for one thing and he's throwing the opposite. You know he's got several we, we haven't seen too many curveballs. But he will get them looking away for the balls that move away the sinker and the change up and then surprise them with a four seam fastball up top. We haven't seen too many breaking balls. Two and one There's one there. You mentioned the leadership of Giambi when he batted in the second inning. He will not be nominated for any postseason awards, at least any official postseason awards. But you talk to anybody connected closely to the Indians and why they have done so well this year. And there are numbers that explain why they've improved so much this year. And they've got a new manager who's won the World Series a couple of times. And then you got this guy doing that in his 40s. Shoot, that's that's crazy. Look at that. That's great hustle. Three and two. Do you see your teammate playing that hard and you and he's in his 40s? Shame on you if you don't play as hard. Now you don't have to dive at first base to play hard. Just that kind of effort there's what Francona really appreciates. And he will walk with two outs. Shields snaps at that throw back from Salvador Perez and the Indians have two on with two out. So a long inning for him. His longest inning by quite a few pitches. And he's up to 70 now with two down in the fourth inning. Try to four seamer there on Giambi. Got a little bit up and away. Jan Gomes grounded out to third in the second inning. And way outside for ball one. You know, another thing about Giambi, when you look back on his career and those who have influenced him, he was he went to the A's after they had a great run, and then he started a new run, but he was around Mark McGuire, taught him a lot about 
how to play the game every day, how to handle himself as a major leaguer in the spotlight. He was with the Yankees. He was around Derek Jeter. And when he was a very young player in the Arizona Fall League, he played with Michael Jordan. Remember when Michael Jordan was uh, trying to become a baseball player? Now trying to pass along a lot of that valuable information to the next generation. One and one on Jan Gomes. Top of the fourth has crawled along here. Good fastball over the outside edge. One and two. They don't care how long it takes. Just want to execute your pitches right here. Salvi is doing a nice job putting good targets out there for him, and he's a wonderful target to throw to. Back with a fastball. Two balls, two strikes. Gats nice setup pitch there if he wants to throw a change up here. Catcher Salvador Perez and James Shields and Dave Island, the pitching coach, usually get together before each game and the starting pitcher that night and they talk about what they're going to do in certain situations like this. Very tempting pitch. And Gomes didn't go for it. Hard to lay off a pitch like that, especially with a runner in scoring position. They're waiting James out here. He's going to have to challenge him. So now the added advantage for the Indians will have Brantley and Giambi running. Take your chances. Pitch count getting up there. You got to throw a strike. 30th pitch of the inning. Still three and two. He took a little bit off there. Looked like he threw a little cutter. Maybe a slider. Didn't break that much, but it had a little bit of movement on it. Santana struck out, and then Brantley singled. Cabrera flied out, and then Giambi walked. That walk seemed to anger Shields. Fastball, he just blew it right by him. Vents his frustrations after the two out walk. He strikes out Gomes at seven for Shields in four scoreless innings. Ooh, you want some passion? There you go.
Watch the Royals and the Cleveland Indians. So three games with Cleveland and then three with the Rangers. And Friday is a special buck night. So bring your dollar bills as hot dogs, peanuts, and small Pepsi products are just $1 each. Royals.com, 1-800-6-ROYALS for tickets. Well, maybe he'll come out on Wednesday and root for Bruce Chen. Come on, Chen! Yeah, see if you can get Will Farrell to make a special appearance. Oh, yeah. For a win, <laughs> he'll do anything. So Maxwell, Carroll, and Escobar in the bottom of the fourth against Casimir. The Royals scored in the first inning on Billy Butler's single. And in the third inning on Salvador Perez's single, both of those base hits coming with two outs. Maxwell struck out swinging in the second inning. Casimir has struck out five. Off the end of the bat. And Cabrera makes the play in shallow left center field. A lot of strikeouts tonight. We have had 12 and three and a half innings. So you got a couple of guys throwing hard. casimir has been up to 95. James Shields, 94. And you can get downloads up to 50 megabits per second with Time Warner Cable Ultimate Internet. And ball one to Jamie Carroll. Carroll one hit shy of 1,000 for his career. Right center field. Swisher is there. And he makes a play. When the Royals faced Casimir on Wednesday afternoon, Jamie Carroll played in that game. And it was the 11th anniversary of his major league debut. Getting to the big leagues at the age of 28 and thinking that maybe his career was going to be over. He was in the Expos organization and he had gone home after playing in double A and in triple A and was thinking about the possibility of a career outside of baseball. And then the Expos had an injury. They were in Chicago. Jamie lived in Indiana. He was the closest of any minor leaguer to get to the Expos as Escobar singles with two outs he has a 10 game hitting streak and a runner on with two down and then the now famous words uttered by Frank Robinson we were talking about him earlier tonight Frank Robinson after watching Jamie Carroll in the month of September said every team needs a Jamie Carroll and that was the beginning of an 11 year major league career. And he was this close to putting an end to his career. Great story. No question about it. Perseverance, talent. It's taken him a long way. The will to survive and never quit. So Alex with Escobar at first, two down. Up the left field line, a long run for Brantley, and it will drop foul. 0 and 1. You know, and Jamie Carroll, he got that start tonight because he had great numbers against Kid Casimir here. So we talked about Giambi, how Giambi was just 1 for 15 coming into this game. We were a little surprised he made the lineup. Well, Carroll coming in was 7 for 14. So, you know, he said, hey, Ned, Ned Yost said, look, I like those numbers. I want to put him in there. He almost got a hit there. He's, Staying at it. One and one. Alex struck out leading off the third, but that pitch got away from Jan Gomes, so he reached on a wild pitch, and that ended up being a big play as Casimir went on to strike out two more in the inning, but only had two outs. And then Salvador Perez. Got Alex home. Alex scoring his 87th run of the year. Over the inside, one ball, two strikes. Casimir has thrown 
seventy four pitches. Two and two. The ability to keep your shoulder tucked in on a left handed breaking ball for lefties is the biggest thing. And we talked about it earlier. The, the high averages of both Gordon and Hosmer is due largely to the fact that they're keeping that shoulder closed and they're not flailing. They're able to pick up the read on the breaking ball and spit on it when it's outside of the, the zone. And if it hangs, they know it. Oh. Back to Kazmir. So that one did hang. Alex put a good swing on it, but he hit it right into Kazmir's glove to end the inning. At the end of four, the Royals lead 2-0. Cheer on all-star Alex Gordon in his special fan section with a $30 ticket that includes a limited edition Gordo Nation t-shirt and sit in the field box or plaza sections in left field. The last Gordo Nation of the season is Wednesday night versus Cleveland. Get your tickets at royals.com slash Gordo Nation. There is a very light mist falling at the moment. And in looking at the radar, there really isn't any heavy rain out there, but rain has been in the forecast for today for quite a while. But most of the rain that has been approaching Kansas City over the last few hours has really dissipated. And just a, as I said, a very light mist. The one or two umbrellas opened up. Chisholm Hall, Bourne, and Swisher coming up in the fifth inning. That is launched to right field into the mist. And Maxwell at the fence gave it a good attempt, but Lonnie Chisholm Hall has hit his 11th home run of the year to make it a 2 1 game. There's a hitter looking for a fastball that got one. Where he was looking. Okay, there he was. Says, all right, something firm out over the middle. I'm going to try to put an easy swing on. And because the pitch was elevated, he was able to hit it up and over the fence. Bunted to Carroll. He trapped it and throws it away. And Bourne now has to hustle back to first base, and he gets there in time. Very good bounce for the Royals off of the netting in front of the dugout suite. That could have been a lot worse. Yeah, it could have been. Now, Jamie Carroll, he did all he could to catch that ball on the fly. Came up a little short, but he got to his feet in time. And he knew Michael Bourne was running. He can fly, so he really had to get up quickly. And he goosed the throw. And 
and you saw Bourne take a turn to the left. And when you do that, you're free game to get tagged out if you don't get back to the base in time. So that was Hosmer's play to Bonifacio to try to get him. Strike to Swisher. He is singled and walked. I mean, umpires are so sticky on that play if you're a runner running down the line and you just even turn your shoulder into fair territory and walk back to the base. I've been tagged out on plays like that. You can get tagged out. So you got to really be careful if you're a runner. They couldn't quite get him. And sometimes a runner will go through the bag and they will end up on the left side of the line. But they don't make a move towards second base. And many times the first baseman will tag him out just in case. The umpire thought that he made some gesture towards second. But Bourne, he knew it. He needed to get back to first base. He has 27 stolen bases, Bourne does. Let me take that back. 22 stolen bases. But he's been thrown out 11 times. That's tied for the most in the league. Great changeup. Shields is ahead one and two. I don't know, the swi the, the uh, splits on Swisher from the left side and the right side are pretty vastly different. I mean, left-handed he's hitting just 221. Right-handed he's hitting 289. But he's got a little bit more power numbers from the left side. 11 because he's facing more righties. I want to keep it away from him. Any mistakes up and out over the plate, he can hurt you. up again. Well this time Shields gets Swisher after Swisher reached the first two times and that's an eight strikeout game for Shields and we're only in the fifth inning. Yeah it's tremendous movement away on the changeup tonight and he's got a great feel for that pitch. It's working for him. His season high is nine. He's done that three times. And now another dangerous hitter. Kipnis, 17 home runs, but Shields has struck him out twice and starts him off inside. Ball one. Slider for a strike. Two balls, one strike. You know, watching Shields pitch. He's really taking his time. He's thinking about what he's going to throw, the execution. It reminds me kind of a chess match. You know, chess is a little bit slower than a checkers game. Checker, he just kind of go. Chess match, you got to think a little bit before you're going to move, maybe what, what the next guy's going to do. And that's what we're seeing right here. Salvador Perez is guiding him. Being very careful to not leave anything out over the plate. Mistake. Which is what a pitcher tries to do every single time. It, What's a mistake pitch? Well, if a pitcher could be perfect, and I'm not talking about a perfect game, I'm talking about every single pitch is perfect, they're always trying to hit the edges of the strike zone. Sometimes they don't quite get to the edge, and the mistake is the ball that stays out over the middle of the plate, and now Sal setting up outside. Change up, and Kipnis strikes out, and that is number nine for Shields to tie a season high. Great spot. And look at that movement down. There's not a hitter in the world that can square that up for a base hit. Maybe foul it off. That's that's just really tough to hit. It's the third time that Shields has struck out Kipnis. And the second time with that pitch, swinging at a changeup. And now Santana. This could easily be a 2 2 tie right now if the Royals didn't handle Santana's double better than they did back in the first inning. It's 
Santana with Swisher at first base and two down. He doubled into the right field corner. And Maxwell running into the corner made a strong throw to Bonifacio. Bonifacio made a strong throw to the plate. Swisher had to hold a third. And then Shields retired the next hitter, Brantley. Standing and that almost cost him. Yeah, not only does Shields have quick feet, but he puts a lot on it. We talked about his location of his throws over to Hosmer right there on the back. That one came up high and did it hit Bourne? Looks like his reaction it did. It ended up in Hosmer's glove. And you know, I would bet if you put a clock on that ball he's thrown over there, I'm going to say that's going to be 70, maybe 75. It looked like he jammed his wrist on Hosmer's elbow. Challenge him with a fastball. Ball one strike. You know, his changeup has been so good that at times he's just thrown the fastball right over the middle of the plate, and that pitch has some life to it. And the Indians aren't doing anything with his fastball either. Not if it's located properly. Now Chisenhall got one that was that was out over. We were talking about a mistake, but but, but right here he's bearing down. And now two and one. Can't help but wonder are the hitters in the back of their minds thinking to themselves, don't get out in front of the changeup. Don't get out in front of the changeup. And that little hesitation is not allowing them to catch up to the fastball. Believe me, they think about that. You know, they try to eliminate the thinking and react. You gotta you gotta really look for fastball and adjust to anything else. Fastball's a little straighter and a little bit easier to put in play. Born runs and Santana fouls it back. Santana has an 11 game hitting streak after his hitting his double in the first inning. He has driven in 11 against the Royals this year. Strikeouts for James Shields as he gets Swisher, Kipnis, and Santana in order to end the inning. <laughs> Get the paintbrush out. All of those guys got to go.
Try pasta the Panera way. Live consciously, eat deliciously. By Ford, see the new F-150 at your Midwest Ford dealer today. And by ATT UVerse TV. Check availability at 1-800-PICK-ATT. Rethink possible. Good to see all those cars in the parking lot here tonight. 2-1 Royals as they bat in the bottom of the fifth against Kazmir. Bonifacio singled, stole a base, and scored the Royals' first run. He's one for two. Butler and Perez have driven in the runs. One ball, one strike. One and two. Eric Hosmer next. Billy Butler coming up in the fifth inning. Hosmer one for two against Kazmir. Billy Butler also one for two with an RBI. Fasio, he's trying to slap that ball out to right field. Nick Swisher, he's been he, he's going over a couple of steps towards the right field line. Glad everybody's all right there. Hold on the ground to third. Chisholm Hall gets Bonifacio just barely. Close play. One down. Well, we hope you'll join our own Nate Bucati in taking big steps toward cancer prevention on Sunday, September 22nd for the Big Step 5K Family Walk and Kids Dash. Proceeds will fund cancer prevention research at the KU Cancer Center right here in Kansas City. Go to Big Steps, that's two Gs, bigsteps.org for all of the details. And we really have to applaud Nate for his efforts here turning a tragedy into something that might help somebody down the road and we emphasize cancer prevention a lot of money being raised these days by and for cancer research and Nate lost a very close college friend of his a year ago tomorrow Sean Biggs who left behind a young wife and a young child and so Nate, in honoring his friend and honoring his family, has done a lot of work to put together a big event. And he has shared with me that Sean's late wife really felt like there wasn't enough being done these days for cancer prevention. And so Nate's put together a big event, great event, and we hope you'll join him and a lot of other people on Sunday. Yeah, he, he was sharing with me today. He was all excited about the response he's getting. Congratulated him on doing something to help others. It's the greatest thing you can do. Way to go, Nate. Two and two on Hosmer, who is lined to the warning track in center field and has a broken bat single to right. Change up. So Kazmir. Pull in the string. Six strikeouts for him. So 10 for Shields. We've seen 16 strikeouts in a little fewer than five innings tonight. Well, these guys are some of the best on their teams at what they do, and, and they're strikeout pitchers. So that's what you're going to get. Some stuff. Stuff, guys. Stuff equals hard breaking balls, hard fastballs. That's what they call stuff. And Kazmir snags a one hopper and gets Billy. Kazmir has his second one, two, three inning. We played five. Royals lead 2 1.
James Shields with the Royals running out of time and they needed a big game from James and he has a season high 10 strikeouts which is impressive any night but he's done it in just five innings. He had previously struck out nine three times and now 10 <laughs> and venting his frustrations. That was a strikeout in the fourth inning after a walk to Giambi with two down and so he's back out there for the sixth. The Indians have been tough on James Shields. In his career he's two and five. He's one to know this year. And when I say tough on him it has to do with some long grinding starts as Mike Moustakis will take over at third base for Jamie Carroll before we begin the sixth inning. Shields has really only had one start against Cleveland this year where he's been able to pitch deep into the game and that was on Wednesday when he gave up just two runs in eight innings. But aside from that they have really made life difficult on Shields and while he has a 2 1 lead he has thrown 95 pitches as he begins the top of the sixth inning. Two balls and no strikes. They've been selective, but they've also fouled off a lot of balls from James tonight. Really struggled in that fourth inning. That was when he let out that big yell. It was like, ah, oh, finally got him off. Stress reliever. Brantley is grounded out, and he is singled. His single in the fourth inning put an end to an 0 for 15. And Shields is in with a strike two and one. Brantley Cabrera and Giambi in the sixth. So this will be pitch number 99. And pulled on the ground to Bonifacio. So a good start to the sixth inning as Shields gets a ground out. So here's what we're talking about. These are each of the first four starts for Shields. June the 17th 111 pitches in six innings and then 104 pitches in five and a third 113 in six innings and then the game on Wednesday where he had fewer than 110 pitches and went eight plus innings and now tonight here's pitch number 100 after five and a third ball one to Cabrera who is 0 for 2. Pop out to second base and a fly out to center field. And it's hit hard but pulled foul. One ball, one strike. So tonight, tomorrow night, Wednesday night with the Indians. And on Wednesday, the first 10,000 fans will receive a reusable Royals water bottle, courtesy of Grunfoss. HUD's already got his hands on one of those. Very nice. Somewhere, Vanna White is watching and she is blushing. Great presentation. I'll, uh, open up the top here. It's good, and folks. It's Wednesday night at 7:10. Beautiful. Up the right field line. That's a fair ball. And Cabrera is digging for two. And it's second base with one out. So again a down year for him overall but not against the Royals and the tying runs in scoring position with one out. And that has the Royals bullpen moving around that will. And another ball left up over the plate looked like that was a change up the same pitch that Chisholm Hall hit for the home run. We had to look at it several times in between commercials just to get the grip and see what that pitch was from James Shields on the home run. And it was a changeup, similar to that one, that last one. 
So Wade Davis just begins to play catch out in left field. And now Giambi. Shields has struck him out. And Shields has walked Giambi. Ball one. Jason Giambi is one out of 16 against Shields. One and one. Right center field and deep. Kane is back and Kane runs it down on the track. Cabrera runs back to second to tag. And a chance for an out at third, and Cabrera is able to get under the tag, and Moustakis is not able to hang on. It was a, a tough chance for him, but a big gamble by Cabrera. Oh, it was unnecessary. But he, what a play by Lorenzo Kane. Man, that ball by Giambi was hit hard. He got a, some good wood on it. Kane, with a perfect jump, runs it down with no problem. Showing the form that he showed so, so well early in the season. Ball was a tough one for Moose to handle. Main thing was Moose stayed in front of it. Blocked it to keep it from getting away from him. Because by the time James Shields got over there to third base to back up, it wasn't in time. So if that ball would have got by Moose, he would have scored. So great job by Moose. And now Gomes... But a chance to drive it and run in the fourth inning, but Shields struck him out, and he pops it up. Bonifacio makes the play. So Shields gets around the one-out walk. Kane helps him out on defense, and Shields has given up one run in six innings. us to St. Petersburg and a base hit up the middle for Evan Longoria at that point it makes it four to two in the fifth inning the game was tied 2 two but four spot for the Rays as they make it six to two and this one just ended second to go with Lance Berkman striking out to end the game against former Royal Jamie Wright so the Texas Rangers guys have lost seven in a row Ryan Hud back to you Wow and that puts them seven games back in the West. So the A's have pretty much wrapped that up. 
Our Sonic Slam inning contestant is Deb Shaw from Lawrence. And if the Royals hit a home run this inning, Deb wins $800. Royals hit a grand slam out of the park. Deb Shaw wins 25 grand from Sonic and the Kansas City Royals. Salvador Perez has driven in one of the two runs. Billy Butler drove in the other. He'll be followed by Lorenzo Kane and Justin Maxwell. And Kazmir is in with strike one. One and one. That was Sal's 24th RBI in the last month. A little less than a month. And that's belted into left center field, and that'll roll to the wall. And Sal, around second, on his way to third. He is safe with a triple. His third triple of the year. <laughs> I think Salvador is pulling out that license to drive that bus. That was a beautiful stroke. I mean, he just tattered that ball and shocked the house as he kept his stride going towards third base. I thought he was going to pull out the parachute and take two, and he said no. And you know where you get that triple? Right out of the box. Look at him. He took three, four good hard steps because he knew he hit it in the gap. Casimir is saying, come on, this guy's going. I know he's not supposed to run, but he's flying around in bases. It was close. Nice call. He's right on it. Bill Wilkie. Casimir is saying, oh, no. So those kind of emotions out of a pitcher, the offensive players like to see that. Or take him out of his game. Indians will bring the infield in as Lorenzo Kane has another chance tonight to drive in a run. He is 0 for 2 and he is stranded 4. Chased a high pitch and missed 0 and 1. Kane in the first inning with two on, two out, grounded into a force out. In the third inning with two on, two out, grounded into a force out. And now he can just get the ball into the outfield and deep enough for Sal he could give the Royals a two run lead. Maybe that's why he went after that first pitch that was up looking for a pitch that is elevated. He was. Casimir came back down low and might try to come up again. He'd like for him if he does make contact to hit it at one but it, any of those guys that are in on the grass on the right side or Halfway on the left side. Thought about it. Two and one. And this will be pitch number ninety five for Kazmir. Three and one. So I think he's made all the pitches that he's wanted to make. He just hasn't been able to get Kane to swing at him. Third time around. He's making some adjustments here. He's able to catch himself before he swings. He's picking it up out of his hand. Full count. Every hitter that goes up there in a big situation wants to be the guy. But you don't have to be. If he doesn't give you a pitch here, let the next guy do what he can do. Still alive. Just turned on your TV and you see 2 1, bottom of the sixth inning. It'd be easy to say, wow, this has been a pitching dominated game. And I guess in the end, that would be right. But there has been a lot of pressure on both of the pitchers tonight. A lot of pitches have been thrown. 
And both Shields and Kazmir have gotten some big outs. But there have been base runners and scoring opportunities all over the place. Drilled. Center field and deep. Bourne is back, and it's off the wall. So Kane will get the RBI. And now he's trying for three. Kane is safe, and the Royals have back-to-back -back triples to begin the sixth inning. So you want to be the guy. Way to wait him out. Lorenzo Kane got him a cookie. Oh, yeah. He said, you know what? I know what to do with that. It's coming back to me now. I used to drive the bus earlier in the season. And that ball was hit extremely hard. No chance for the center fielder born to grab that one. Back to back triples. And Lorenzo Kane, he thought about staying at second, but he said, my teammates won't let me down. They'll never let me hear the end of it. If I can't get three, and Salvi did before me, that was nice. So that'll chase Casimir out of the game. Royals once again have a two-run lead. And with right-hand batting, Justin Maxwell coming up. Terry Francona places Kazmir with a right-hander. So a Chevy call to the bullpen. The Royals will be making a move as well, and we'll talk about that when we come back. David Lowe hits a ground ball, base hit into right field. He was pinch hitting for Maxwell. And the Royals have taken a 4-1 lead in the sixth inning. I'll tell you, that's a good time to get your first pinch hit in your career with a stake attached to it. That's right, being aggressive. Wants to be a player off the bench for Ned Yost and this Royals team in the future. If you're going to be, you got to start being ready to hit. And he was. He was 0 for 6 coming into that at bat right there. As a pinch hitter. And now Mike Moustakis hits for the first time. And Albers misses inside. Ball one. Jamie Carroll started at third. And then Moustakis took over defensively in the top half of the inning. So Albers on for the 51st time after Kazmir went five innings, gave up those back to back triples, and then departed. Below the knees, 2 0. Oh. 
40 RBIs would look a lot better than 39. They'll see it. Hopefully he does in this at bat here, but she's confident she'll see it as well. A moose backer. Matt Albert's got a mid-90 fastball slider and a changeup. Low started to run and he stops and now it's 3 and 0 on Mustakis. Albers likes that sinking fastball, but right here he's got to get in that strike zone. Center field. So he took the green light. Not a bad swing. Didn't quite get his arms extended. So Mustakis is out number one. Well, baseball season isn't over, so don't forget to pick up the latest Royals gear. At Rally House, as Alcides Escobar comes up, but on one out, Escobar has extended his hitting streak to 10 games with a fourth inning single. Now low runs. And it's chopped up the middle, and Cabrera's only play will be to first. Santana came off the bag. You know, Hud, in the first inning when we showed you the Indians defensively, the numbers will tell you that Santana has only made one error at first base. He is far from a smooth fielding first baseman, however, and right there it looked like he had his feet mixed up. Yeah, and Cabrera. Didn't have a chance there to get his feet set and get some momentum going back to first base, and he missed his target, pulled him off the bat. So as Struble didn't exactly make a good throw, Santana did all he could to hold on to it. Ooh, man, I'll tell you, that looked like he might have put the tag on him before his foot hit the bat. And when I say feet mixed up, you'll see a, a lesser experienced first baseman go into a stretch prematurely. As opposed to waiting for the throw and then adjusting. So he wasn't able to get as high as he probably could have. You're right. Another Chevy call to the bullpen for the Indians. on and the Royals have scored a second run he gives up a run that is charged to Casimir 
And now Nick Hagedon, a lefty, with Alex Gordon coming up, and he inherits Lowe at second and Escobar at first. Indians have also committed an error in the inning. Pile it on. He's got a 93 95 mile hour fastball, good slider. Occasional change ups to righties. So, but he'll be trying to break that ball away from Alex Gordon, who came in hitting 320 with eight homers against lefties. Under the chin, and that puts Alex on his knees. One ball and no strikes. Usually a setup pitch for the breaking ball away after he comes in high and tight like that. Looking for his first hit of the evening. And he's done well against Hagedon. Two out of six. Right field. Playable for Swisher. He hits that ball into the wind. Swisher brings it down. And both runners tagging. Escobar is safe at second base. So that could have ended the inning. But instead... This time the aggressive base running pays off and the Royals have two in scoring position. Now, you know, the, we know they're an aggressive base running team. However, this inning, it's worked, but it could have went the other way. Salvador Perez with that double. It could have been a leadoff double. He turned it into a triple, and if he's thrown out there, it would have been really costly. And this one here, especially with the play in front of you, Escobar saw it the whole way, and Swisher got it to the cutoff, man, and he too... Kipnis threw it, but it was a one hopper. And Escobar's foot got in there. But there's no need for that right there. However, it worked. They'll take it. But Salvador Perez, you know, it'd have been a lot easier for him just to stop at second base there with nobody out at second, but he pushed the envelope and barely made it in there. So fortune is smiling on the Royals tonight. And Bonifacio got a pitch up and fouled it straight back. But you know, when you're an aggressive base running team, Ned Yost and managers that have teams like that do not want their players to be afraid of making mistakes. Obviously, you can tell that these runners here are aggressive and going for it, and they're not afraid if they make a mistake. That's what you want. Good hitting with runners in scoring position tonight. Breaking ball for a strike. It's 0 2. Bonifacio singled, stole a base, and scored in the first inning. Royals have scored one in the first, one in the third. They had a 2 0 lead. The Indians got a run in the fifth, and now the Royals with two in the sixth. And now two runners in scoring position for Bonifacio. Missed outside, 97 from Hagedon, one and two. James Shields doesn't look like a guy is coming back out for the seventh inning, and Wade Davis has been throwing this whole inning. Shields has thrown 106 pitches. And four runs of support for Shields. There were times this year that that was a mountain of runs for him. You're right. It was really hard to get runs early for him. Broke his bat in half. Not an easy play. And it's booted by Chisenhall and the Royals lead 5-1. All of the base running, all of the gappers, the triples. That, I think the speed sometimes does that, Ryan. Guy like this jam shot, he's got to come in. That's on the line. It's a very difficult play, and he just clanked it. He flat out missed it, Chisholm. He'll tell you, just took my eye off it. Is it one hopper? I had the top of the hop just coming down. Couldn't make the play. And nice to hear the roar of the crowd here at the K. Fans got their fangs out, and it's good that they brought their voices with them. 
So that's the second error of the inning. And then remember in the third inning there was a strikeout and a wild pitch which resulted in a run. And now first and third for Hosmer the eighth man to come up in the inning. Think about it though Ron you know that speed is what does that. That's what makes it hard on defenders. The first air on Cabrera Ned sent the runner. So he was going to cover the bag. And then he had to stop and come back. Escobar was still and he threw flat footed to try to get him, pulled him off the base. That one there by Chisenhall was a jam shot by a fast runner. He had to be perfect and he clanked it. Speed does that. Hosmer is lined to deep center. He is single to right and he has struck out. All those against. The starter Kazmir also a lefty and now facing Hagedon and Hosmer's two out of four against him. Off the plate that's a foul ball 0 and 2. Royals have played some of their best baseball this year inside the division. Royals are 39 and 30 against the Central just seven and nine against Cleveland and Hosmer is one of those hitters that has also done some of his best work against the Central and specifically the Indians he's driven in 10 against Cleveland. That move did not fool Bonifacio. Bonifacio runs. Hosmer hits a smash, and Santana was using his glove as a shield and the ball stuck in the webbing and that ends the inning. The inning begins with the first back to back triples in over a year and the Royals come up with three. Oh back to back triples call the cops it's on. That got the three run sixth going. He's also driven in a run. David Lowe as a pinch hitter also chipped in in that inning. His first career pinch hit and RBI. And James Shields for the season high 10 strikeouts gets the Royals through six innings. And now David Lowe will stay in right field. He was pinch hitting for Maxwell. And Ned Yost turns it over to the bullpen. and. 
Wade Davis will get Chisenhall, Bourne, and Swisher. And you really didn't have to spend a lot of energy second guessing Ned Yost yesterday because he was admittedly second guessing himself when he left Jeremy Guthrie out for the eighth inning. Ned talked about that after the game yesterday. He talked about it some more before the game tonight and said that as long as he's been a manager, he said there's about he said maybe 10 times a year when he makes a decision and it keeps him up all night. And the more he thinks about those decisions and reassesses all the data, he says about nine out of 10 times, I realize that maybe I didn't get the result I wanted, but I'm okay with the decision. He said yesterday was that one time where he felt like he wished he could go back and dip into that bullpen sooner than he did. Yep, you know, it's it's not an easy seat to be in. It's a lot of pressure. Especially this time of the year in games like this, a bunch of one game playoffs, your team's backs against the wall. Man, you're gonna be raked over the coals on decisions that are hopefully the good ones. But unfortunately there's the bad ones too. It happens. But Wade Davis feels pretty honored, I'm sure, to pick up after his former teammate and current teammate with the Rays, and then now here the Royals. And he's gonna see. I gotta finish this down here. I gotta take care of big game James's outstanding start. Six innings, one run, one earned run, two walks, ten punch outs. For what his teammates call him, Wago G. Chisholm all responsible for the only Cleveland run with a home run leading off the fifth inning. And a strikeout for Davis to begin the seventh inning. So the Royals have struck out 11 Indians tonight. And they've done that in six in the third innings. All right, Hud, let's see how we do tonight. Our AT&T trivia question. I tried to help you out the other night in Detroit, but I couldn't get your attention. Sorry, my bad. Who was the National League MVP the year that Jason Giambi won it in the American League? Ball one to Bourne, who's one for three. One and one. Well, I'm assuming that there's some sort of a connection to the game tonight, right? You would think. Otherwise, do we care who the MVP was in the National League in 2000? No. And got the corner. Bourne's not very happy about it. He has already struck out twice tonight. Staring down Brian Onora, who stares him right back down. Yeah, he's and now not careful. They're doing more than staring at each other. Give him a hat trick to go back on, see if he likes it. 97 miles an hour, Wade Davis with back to back strikeouts to begin the seventh inning. Right down the middle. Tough night for Michael Bourne. Look at Salvi saying, put it right here. And he did. Davis has a lot more in his tank now that he can conserve himself. He's not a starter. He's. Let's see. Uh, the previous pitch before the strikeout, this was his reaction. Didn't help him. Oh, then he said something again. So two down to Swisher. And that's low ball one. Davis, he'll, he'll throw that cut fastball. It's a good one for him. Gonna go with a big overhand curve ball. He's got a change up he'll use too. Two and zero. Oh. 
let's see, 2000, the Yankees won the World Series in 2000. Who'd they beat? Did they beat the Braves? They lost to the Diamondbacks in 01. Three and zero. Somebody with the Rockies. Three and one. But weren't the Rockies real good then? Really good. Full count on Swisher. Twelve of the twenty outs so far have been strikeouts. Shields struck out ten. Davis has struck out two. Shields struck out the side in the fifth inning. Swisher will walk with two down. Second time he has walked. And now Kipnis, and he knows all about strikeouts. He struck out three times against Shields. Swinging twice, twice and looking once, and the two swinging strikeouts were on Shields' changeup, which was excellent tonight. And he takes high ball one from Davis. You still thinking about that question? Yeah, you know, I'd like to really concentrate on the game. The question is kind of taking me away from it, so I'm going to let the question go. Well, considering that Kipnis can hit a grand slam right now. Yeah. So you think I should focus on the question? I don't know. We got a clue that the MVP was on the other side of the bay. Barry Bonds? It's got to be. Two and one. Hit well to center field, but Lorenzo Kane is right there. So Davis out of the pen, gets two strikeouts, pitches a scoreless seventh. Stretch time at Coffin Stadium, the Royals lead 5-1.
trucks, visit thoroughbredford.com. And by Farmland Foods and their Bacon a Difference charity concert. All tickets are $10 with proceeds benefiting harvesters. Go to baconadifference.com. So Billy Butler comes on with the Royals leading 5-1. Bottom of the seventh inning. And Carlos Carrasco is out of the Indians' bullpen. 12 appearances, seven of those have been starts, and his ERA is over six and a half. Pass Carrasco, and Cabrera can't make a play, and Billy's on with his second hit. Yeah, I'll tell you what, whenever you hit a ball not clean and you kind of hit it half like that, if you have top spin on the baseball, it's got a good chance of getting through. Second and third hops pick up a little bit of speed. Billy's going good. Two nice base hits up the middle tonight. And now Sal, two hits, a run scored, an RBI, and a walk. He's been perfect at the plate. And he goes after the first pitch. And Cabrera backs up to get a big hop. And that cost the Indians a double play, potential double play. They get the force on Billy Butler, and there is one down. Billy Butler and Carrasco, and we really couldn't set up any potential drama between the two of them because Billy singled on the first pitch. But you might remember a couple of years ago, the Royals were in Cleveland, and Melky Cabrera hit an impressive home run to right field. And he was so impressed that he decided to stand and watch it for a while. Well, Carrasco didn't like that. It was a grand slam hit Ooh. by Melky Cabrera. Mm. And the next pitch sailed right over Billy Butler's head. And so Carrasco was suspended for six games. He was then sent to the minor league, so he didn't start his suspension. Then he injured his elbow and had Tommy John surgery. So he still had not served his suspension. Mm. He didn't serve it at all in 2012 because he was recovering from the injury. So then this year he's called up. He serves the six game suspension and in his first appearance he throws at Kevin Euclid and gets suspended for eight more games. Oh man. <laughs> that's, that's not good. He's got good stuff. Good hard fastball. Good change up. Slider. Kane pulls it foul. Royals had an exciting bottom of the sixth inning, which began with. A Salvador Perez triple, followed by a Lorenzo Kane triple. By the way, Kane and Perez have the same number of triples this year. That might surprise some people. Three. Huh. And then Lowe singled in a run. Another run scored on an error. And the Royals went from a 2 1 lead to a 5 1 lead. Santana runs near the dugout suite and it drops untouched. Yeah, Carrasco, you know, he, he started earlier, I think, in a game against the Royals this year. He had one start in Cleveland against him. Looked good. He also had a change up that I remember it was a really good pitch for him. Got his first major league win against the Royals back in 2010. In fact, three years ago tomorrow, right here at Coffin Stadium. Just inside, two and two on Kane.
still two and two. Tomorrow night, Giordano Ventura will make his major league debut. Called up from AAA and will pitch in place of Danny Duffy. Duffy will be passed over for a second straight start. He has a little strain in his left forearm and remember he's coming off Tommy John surgery. So the Royals don't want to mess with that but he has had an MRI and the MRI showed a very slight strain so no fear at the moment that he has somehow re injured his left elbow. So it'll be Ventura tomorrow. Corey Kluber for the Indians at 710. Still three and two. So Ventura and Kluber, and then Wednesday night, Bruce Chen and Danny Salazar, who recently was called up by the Indians, and he's pitched very well 2.66 ERA. And for Salazar, that'll be his. Ninth big league start. Long run for Swisher and for Kipnis. And Kane is still alive. Giordano Ventura pitched in the Futures game last year here at Coffin Stadium. And in the minor leagues, eight and six. ERA a little over three. And the number that really jumps out 155 strikeouts in 134 innings. All right, another power arm. Let's see him. Can't wait. Got to get the W here tonight first. Strike three called. So Carrasco wins this battle with Kane, two down. David Lowe has a pinch hitter in the sixth inning, swung at the first pitch thrown by Matt Albers and single to right, driving in a run, his first major league pinch hit. Perfect time. Get it with a runner on. And he did it on the first pitch. The other times that he had pinch hit, you know, and it's the hardest job in baseball for, for a position player to come in and try to, you know, cold, try to gauge your swing on his pitch and he would take the first two strikes and now you got you got hardly any chance when you do that so he's learned he's learning and he stepped in there real confident a lot of pitchers try to get ahead of you with that first pitch and he stroked it perfectly in that hole between first and second nice Broke his bat, but he gets another base hit. And that'll send Perez to third. So David Lowe is two for two. And the Royals are still going in the seventh inning. Trying to come in on him, but it didn't go in. It stayed out. And when it's out over the plate like that, got a good chance to put it in play. Jam shot, but that bat died a hero. That's a knock. Rich Hill, a left hander, will come on to face Mike Moustakis. Two on, two out. Royals lead 5 1 in the bottom of the seventh.
bottom of the seventh inning. Remember, only five home games left. So let's pack off in stadium. Two more with the Indians, three with the Rangers. Remember, you can get a lower level field plaza seat for just $15 to any of the remaining games of the Cleveland series. A discount of 50%. The 610 Sports September Special. Oh, yeah. The organization's doing their share to get the folks out here, man. They're doing their part, and the Royals are doing theirs, and they sure would love to see some more fans come in here, although they're happy with what they get. And they're passionate people here. It's beautiful to hear the roar, all the outs, you know, and all the, you know, it's, it's a little extra. Fans know it. Rich Hill to face Moustakis, who batted for the first time in the sixth inning. Runners at first and third. That's a strike, one and one. Jamie Carroll started at third base. Moustakas came on in the sixth. And he has Perez at third and low at first. He's going to go 88 to 93 with his fastball. Big curveball. There it is. Well, you're right. That thing comes in like it was thrown from the right field bullpen. It's a big one. Now that one, when you when it starts in back of you, if you're a left-handed hitter, it's gonna be a strike. If it starts out at you, it's gonna be a ball. That's the release point lefties have to pick up here on a guy like this. David Lowe runs and Moustakis hits it off the end of the bat into center field. It drops for a hit. So he drives in his 40th run and the Royals lead 6-1 in the seventh inning. Okay, Moose, he picked up the release point. Has really benefited from the Indians respecting his power. He hasn't hit a lot of home runs this year, but Michael Bourne was very deep in center field. So there was plenty of room out there for Stockis to hit a little chip shot in a shallow center. Yeah, but he stayed on that ball very nicely. He wasn't a bit fooled. Like I said, he picked it up when it started behind his back. He knew it was going to be hittable. Escobar swings and fouls it away. One for three tonight. He has a 10 game hitting streak. Luke Coach Haver ready for the top of the eighth inning. And no matter what happens here, he's going to be pitching with a big lead. Outside one and one. Which he'll, he'll throw an occasional change up when he has to to a righty. Base hit right field. It's a 7 1 Royals lead. Escobar has a two hit game. David Lowe. Comes in from third. And the Royals have scored five of their seven runs in the last two innings. Just love to see it. Fans are happy about it. The guys getting some good at bats. Try to come in there to shorten it up. Went right to the ball. But let's not forget how the table was set early for great performance by James Shields. That Cleveland Indian fan there is not too happy. Hopefully he has the same look for the next two nights and they can get out of town. But James Shields was marvelous tonight. 
season high 10 punch outs. He was dealing. And now Alex with a chance to extend his hitting streak, which is at 10. He is 0 for 4 tonight, but he has scored a run. He struck out, but reached on a wild pitch in the third inning and turned that into a run. So do you say save some for tomorrow night for the young kid making his debut? Or you just let him open it up, throttle open? You wish it could work that way. I know. Woo. I say pedal to the metal. Get all you can get. One and two. Well, after the weekend games in Detroit, it's kind of nice to have a little breather right now, isn't it? Boy, three <laughs> six run lead. Emotional games. Oh, man. Tough one on Friday. An exciting one on Saturday. Another tough one yesterday. And another example of this young team just bouncing back after a heartbreaking loss. That is a foul ball by a foot. Stockus and Escobar on the bases. They have driven in the two runs in this inning. Alex strikes out. That ends the inning. Three runs in the sixth, two more in the seventh, and we head to the eighth. Luke Kochaver coming on with the Royals leading by six. Two told you about Tampa Bay knocking off Texas six to two. The White Sox couldn't score much against Cleveland, but they put up a 12 spot and perhaps counting playing Minnesota. Cincinnati all over Houston, LA on top of Oakland early in that one, and San Diego shuts out Pittsburgh. And so we take you for our Mazda game break to PNC Park, a one hit shutout for the Padres as they knock off the Pirates. And you talk about meaningful baseball, three-team race in the National League Central between Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, St. Louis, and that fan represents all three of those teams. <laughs> all right, Joel, Luke Hochaver with a 7-1 lead takes over in the eighth inning with Santana, Brantley, and Cabrera coming up for Cleveland. We just showed you Hochaver's excellent numbers all year. 
a 1.67 ERA. But since the All Star break, his ERA is 1.2, with the league hitting just 149 against him since the All Star break. Mm. Dangerous, good mid 90s, even upper 90s fastball we've been seeing. Hard cutter right there. That's a good pitch for him. Likes to locate that on the inner half. He'll roll a curveball up there occasionally to keep him honest, too. But he really hasn't thrown that change up as much as he used to as a starter. Doesn't really need it. Last time Ho Chaver faced the Indians was on Tuesday. And he came on in the seventh inning in relief of Kelvin Herrera. Struck out Swisher. Struck out Kipnis to end the seventh. That was with a runner in scoring position. And then Santana, Brantley, and Cabrera in the eighth. And those are the three hitters he faces in this inning. Santana, Brantley, and Cabrera. Five batters, five strikeouts. Impressive. Talk about stuff. He's got stuff. And folks have seen that stuff over the years. But it's a different kind of stuff now. Coming out of that pin. Three and two on Santana. They knew that Luke had the ability to pitch out of the pin, the pin with success, but they weren't sure how he was going to make the adjustment. And early in the season, you know, they moved, they used him in the long roll a little bit. They kind of got his feet wet in there, but it's nice to see the evolution of him and how he pro progressed all the way through this season here towards the end. They started getting, giving him more meaningful spots in the rotation. He started answering. He started doing the job. Now, that's got him in there setting up. And he's been reduced, or he has reduced himself to really two and a half pitches. His good four seam fastball, which is, man, 95 to 98 hard slider and every now and then he'll flip a curveball up there just to give the hitter something else to think about. That would be the half pitch if you will. But for him the fastball and the slider have been more than enough. The slider stayed up but it's 91 miles an hour. Santana strikes out and now Royals pitchers have struck out 13 Indians tonight. Yep, just put a little wrinkle on it. Slider, cutter. Two are very similar pitches. Got it by him out, out over the middle. So Brantley with one out. He's one for three and just one for his last 17. There's the slider for strike one. There's the breaking ball and it's low one ball one strike. Let's go to Joel. Well Ryan had an interesting conversation with Tom Hamilton of course the Longtime voice of the Indians, and he was saying in their broadcast last week when Luke Hochaver came in and got those five strikeouts, all five batters he faced, he made the comparison to Luke Hochaver reminding him of Jose Mesa back when he was an Indian great. And the interesting comparison is that Jose Mesa did not work out as a starter. As a starter in his career, before they converted him to a reliever, he was 27 and 40 with a 5.07 ERA. They switched him to the bullpen, and a year after that, they were looking for a closer heading into the 1995 season, I think it was, and uh, he ended up with 46 saves that year. And he said that he just really felt like Luke Hochaver reminded him a lot of Jose Mesa, a guy that just couldn't do it starting but was dominant as a reliever. It's always possible, but you never know if somewhere later down the line they try him back in the rotation. Mm -hmm. Leaves options open. And now a strike to Cabrera. And it's just simply too soon.
to talk about that right now. The Royals don't know what their needs are going to be for 2014, just trying to get to this season. Will they make some moves to bring another starting pitcher in? Will they find a way to keep Irvin Santana? If they're able to keep their rotation strong, then that's a pretty reliable guy or becoming. And I'm talking about Hochaver. There's Santana. It's a pretty reliable guy or developing into a overpowering, reliable guy out of the bullpen in Hochaver. Although we've seen here in Kansas City something very similar. It's easy to forget that when Zach Greinke got to the big leagues and he grew up watching the Braves on TV and admired Greg Maddox. So he thought that in order to be successful in the major leagues, you have to be have pinpoint control. And you have to have pitches that sink and cut. And while Zach early in his career every now and then could reach back for the mid 90s when he needed to. That's not how he pitched. I mean he threw 87 to 91 for the most part. Then he went to the bullpen. And while he was out there he was sitting with David Risky one day the veteran reliever who spent some time with the Royals. And David Risky told Zach something that would change Zach's career and that was Zach. If you can throw 95 miles an hour you throw 95 miles an hour. You don't just save 95 miles an hour. And Zach looked like he was on the road to becoming a dominant setup man or a closer. The Royals put him back in the rotation and he was able to take that power approach to being a starter. He didn't pull back when he became a starter and two years later he won a Cy Young. Strike three called so Hochaver has struck out two more in the inning. Cabrera gets right in Brian Onora's mask before hitting the road. So Hochaver continues to strike these same guys out that he did in Cleveland. So he struck out seven of the last Indians he has faced. And now Giambi with a runner at first two down. And that is swung on. Was it fouled or missed. It was fouled and Brantley will have to go back to first. 2000 it was the Yankees and the Mets. That was the New York New York World Series. So was there a. How about Jeff Kent. Well then we were given the hint. Giambi with the A's the winner was on the other side of the bay. Jeff Kent, nice job, Hood. Yeah, but I mean, you know, when they, I mean, come on. They gave us a, a, a nice softball as a hint. Jeff Kent also spent some time with the Indians. And we appreciate that. That Jeff Kent played with the Indians? No, that we got the good hit. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm underwhelmed with the trivia question tonight. It's okay. You yeah. know what? Sometimes that's the way it is in baseball. Three more strikeouts for Luke Hochaver. He has struck out eight of the last nine Indians he has faced, including striking out the side in the eighth inning tonight. Stuff. Royals got plenty of it.
Royals, Fox Sports, and the state of Missouri are teaming up to help you stop smoking. Call 1-800-QUIT-NOW. And Royals Baseball is brought to you by Ram Trucks. Dono Ventura and sitting next to the right guy as he prepares for his major league debut tomorrow chatting with Urban Santana and as the Royals come up in the bottom of the eighth inning Vinny Pestano takes over for the Indians back in there and a base hit for Bonifacio that's his second hit of the game and number 13 for the Royals. Side armor is Pestano. He's got a little slider he'll throw too. Sinker slider. Wait till the ball travels deep in the strike zone. You can get a base hit to the opposite field. Put it right in that hole between the shortstop and third baseman. And a slider in for a strike. Hosmer is one for four. He could easily be three for four. Two of his outs were crushed. Line to the warning track in center field in the first inning. And then last time up, he hit a rocket on one hop to Santana at first, who I think used his glove to protect himself. Good thing. But the ball stuck in the webbing and he went to the bag for the out. Oh, it nearly undressed it. Could have hurt it. That's how hard he hit it. Hit hard to third. Chisenhall had to wait for Kipnis to get there, and the Indians still turn the double play 5 4 3. Another hard hit ball. You can't do anything about that. Keep swinging. Royals have an off day on Thursday, and that day we will have our annual Gloves for Kids. We'll be at Kansas Sampler in Lenexa over by Oak Park Mall, and a great lineup. We'll be there from five to seven. If we get a chance, I'll give you the full lineup. Billy Butler takes ball one. Billy has two hits and an RBI. Lorenzo Kane, David Lowe, Danny Duffy, Jeremy Guthrie, Luis Mendoza, Chris Getz, Lewis Coleman, Johnny Giavitella, Ned Yost. And then from the broadcast side, Royals Hall of Famer Jeff Montgomery is going to make an appearance. And HUD, you've agreed to show up and make an appearance. I'm not, I can't wait either. So grab, the, if you got that baseball card, if you have the Monty baseball card where he's holding that fire extinguisher with those, with that, uh, with his hair band hairdo, sure. or you have the baseball card with you and the uh, dugout Ooh. pole in Detroit, in a uh, <laughs> compromising position. Bring those out and get HUD and Monty to sign them. Oh, man, we'd love it. Can't wait. That's Thursday evening. Thursday evening, 5 to 7. One group from 5 to 6, one group from 6 to 7. Beautiful. And now Billy's on for a third time. Benny Fustano was really <laughs> developing into one of the best young right-handed setup men in the division but he's had a tough year a year that has included him being sent to triple a he has also been on the disabled list he had problems with his right elbow back in May, and you always wonder if that's not in the back of a pitcher's mind if their arm doesn't feel right and Pistano you have to admire his honesty at one point he admitted that he is pitch scared parts of this year scared that he's not going to get the job done this guy last year year before he was a handful yeah he's got a really good slider 
It's a swing and miss pitch, but his fastball's not too shabby. He can rush it up there. He spots it. It can be straight and it can be hit, but he's got to be able to put it on the corners, locate it. Just like most pitchers, unless you're a, a slop thrower, a guy that doesn't have a lot of velocity, you can get away with tricking. Off the end of the bat, and that drops for a base hit. So Salvador Perez is three for three, and he reaches for the fourth time tonight. Take that, and that's off the end of the bat, and hitters call that a bleeder. One of the reasons your hands bleed after them, after you get them. There's a lot of terms for hits like that, but whenever you get a reaction out of a hitter like we're like Sal, we just did, we're on a cool night, it'll sting your hands. That's a bleeder, but it's a knock, makes it feel better. And now Kane takes ball one. Lorenzo's one for four had an RBI triple and a run scored in the sixth inning. I'll tell you though, that that triple he hit that one hit he got nice to see him lay out a liner like that. Strike at the knees one and one. That's the pitch when I think of Vinny Pistano at his best with the Indians just coming in that. Tough angle against the righty, keeping the ball down, locating, hitting his spot. Two and one. Pistano spent part of his childhood in Kansas City. His mom is from Kansas City, Missouri. His grandfather, Ken Webster, was the athletic director at UMKC. And Vinny lived here, age four to eight. Born in California, and then after that, moved back to California. And if you've ever been to the ballpark before the game, or maybe you've been out to the Royals Hall of Fame, and one of the tour guides in character, Casey, is Vinny Pistano's uncle. Dave Webster, tour guide of the Royals Hall of Fame, walks around with the old style bat, the old style oh, uniform. No, I love his uniforms, they're great. And three balls, two strikes. David Lowe is on deck. Seven runs, 14 hits for the Royals. Butler and Perez run. Kane strikes out. He chased ball four. And that is the inning. So the Royals are scoreless in the eighth. It'll be Tim Collins in the top of the ninth. The Royals lead 7-1.
Live. We'll take a look at this Royals offense. Doing very well tonight with runners in scoring position. Big game, James. Big again against the Indians. We'll break that down and get you ready for your Dono Ventura's major league debut. That reaction, analysis, and probably no fire extinguishers for Jeff Montgomery. <laughs> well, we could always ask Monty to bring a fire extinguisher and and repose for that famous or infamous baseball card. <laughs> That's that was a pretty good pose though. One of our crew guys had yeah. uh, uh, of uh, Kelly Monty. Yeah, it was Kelly. All right, Tim Collins in the ninth. James Shields gave up one run in six innings. He had a season high ten strikeouts. Wade Davis and Luke Hochaver were both impressive in their scoreless innings. Davis struck out two. Hochaver struck out three, and the Royals have struck out. 15 Indians tonight. Gomes has struck out once, 0 for 3, and Collins is right in there with a strike. After all those close games, as you pointed out, the Royals with some breathing room tonight. Oh, it's a breath of fresh air. So is that curveball. Nice to see that from Collins. He's got to get that pitch back. So it's not a physical break for the Royals tonight, but it's certainly an emotional break for them. Not have to be living and dying with each pitch in each inning. No question. That's that's a big stress reliever. Just outside, one ball, two strikes. It's been a while since Collins has pitched. He pitched the the tenth inning back on September the fifth against Seattle. Mm. And a good start to the inning for him as he strikes out Gomes. Sixteen Royal strikeouts tonight. Yeah, he has a good bite on his curveball and an excellent straight change up there. He finished him off with. Good location. Down and out of the way from the bat. And now a pinch hitter, Jose Ramirez. Will hit for Lonnie Chisenhall. Ramirez is a switch hitter, so he'll bat from the right side. Ramirez got his first big league hit against the Royals when they were there in Cleveland last week. We were talking about Hochaver and how he's had a strong season all year, but he's been even tougher in the second half. Well, the same for Tim Collins. His ERA is 1.08 since the All Star break. And he is showing no rust at all tonight after having 10 days off in between appearances. Curveball just falls out of the sky and in for a strike. One and two. <laughs> you can't give up on that pitch, although it's easy to. It comes out like it's going to be way out of the strike zone, and then that hammers down. Two and two. That would be a season high 17 strikeouts for the Royals. Ooh, and I'm not surprised because they've got the ability. All that stuff they've got between their starting rotation and that bullpen. Ooh, man. It's all there. Power stuff. Outside of Bruce Jen. I don't know anybody else that, that, that doesn't throw a low to mid 90s. They all got great arms. 
And you don't have to have a power arm to be a good pitcher, but sure helps, especially late in games when you're looking for strikeouts. One and one. Michael Bourne has struck out three times. Royals had previously struck out 16 against the White Sox and 16 against the Twins. One and two. Collins has put a little exclamation point on this, this game here tonight. <laughs> that curveball is falling out of the sky. Warren happy to make contact. And Lorenzo Cain looking up into the mist. Makes the play and the Royals take game one from the Cleveland Indians. Final score 7 1. It was a game until the sixth inning, a 2 1 game. Royals scored three in the sixth and two more in the seventh to pull away. That sixth inning beginning with back to back triples. Salvador Perez and Lorenzo Keynes. The Royals showing some power and some speed to get that inning going. And five runs in those two innings. That was the key. Yeah, you know, you're right. It was a ball game, but I'm telling you, it's great to get a break and, and have some non stress innings late. Way to go. Offense looked good, but let's not forget about big game James Shields. And I'm sure no one has. 10 punch outs on the night. Six hits, only one earned run. That sets the tone. Now, the young man making his debut tomorrow, Ventura, is going to take that baton from James Shields. We'll see it. But our forward play, wow, we got to go offensively. Salvi, he went down and got that and drove that to the alley. Thought he would be happy with the leadoff double. Uh oh, a lot of people were saying, oh no. And he just barely got in there. Casimir couldn't believe it. Well, the very next hitter did the same thing. And Lorenzo Kane says, you know what? I can't be outdone by Salvi. I have got to go for three here. And he did. Back-to-back -back triples. That opened it up. Beautiful thing. The offense came through. And Salvador Perez is standing by on the field with Joe Goldberg. Ryan, thank you very much. A lot to talk about with Salvador Perez. Who do you want this? No. No, 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 no. Sometimes he likes to grab that mic. I know what I tell you, yeah, okay? You're not taking my job. You're doing just fine with your job. Let's talk to Salvador first off about his pitchers. And we'll begin with James Shields. It's not easy facing a team twice in, you know, six, seven days. What was the plan with James tonight, second time against the Indians in a row? Uh, we're talking before the game. You, know, see, you, know, you have to keep the ball down. Uh, we go both sides to the play, the corner he got, the change, I think the best change in the league. Yo, that's what he's doing tonight. Keep the ball down, and they got to win. Well, he had 10 strikeouts. The bullpen had another seven. It ties a Royals record for strikeouts in a game of 17. 1970 and 1986. What were you doing then? I just tried to do it, my yeah. <laughs> no, I mean in 1986. You were not born yet. Oh, yeah. I went in, in, my, in, my, in my papa, you know. <laughs> You weren't even a thought yet, but now you got all these pitchers out there doing their thing. I mean, tell me about this bullpen, too. Uh, I think everybody knows we got the great bullpen. You know, we got the best bullpen in the league. They're doing his job. They, they throw hard. They keep the ball down, you know, and that, that happened. Big two-out RBI for you in the third inning. Billy had one in the first, and then a triple. Tell me about that triple. I don't know. I get lucky in that one. <laughs> Some speed. <laughs> Sometimes. I, I want to be like Dyson. <laughs> <laughs> he says he wants to be like Dyson. Hey, go celebrate with your teammates, and we'll see you back tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Salvador Perez. And, well, Ryan, there you see it. The humor that we know so well with Salvador Perez as he catches the staff with 17 strikeouts. All right. Thanks, Joel. And now we know where he was in 1986. <laughs> Ned Yost pointing to Giordano Ventura. Gee, no pressure. Wow, look at that. It's look you too. tomorrow, young man. Wow. We'll talk about that when we come back.